Have you been scrolling through many, many, many film podcasts thinking there's far too many of these? Or have you been thinking there's something missing? There's something we're not quite getting. A waffler from Northern England reviewing films, for example. Welcome to Ah, oh, review it yourself. No politics, no pandering, no point. Welcome everyone, welcome to oh, Review It Yourself, only because I've just realised the last episode I've just done with Bill didn't do my introduction. Um, <laughs> never mind. Schoolboy um, error, schoolboy yeah. error. People don't care. Um, we're reviewing me and Ryan, so it's Ryan Walk from the Walk the Line podcast. So to celebrate a year of Review It Yourself, where the hell has that gone? Uh, there's yeah. been yeah, it's nuts. Um, we've been doing the Die Hard films, so we're down to... Pretty much the last one. I don't think we'll do the next one. It's too bad. Um, we're going to do Die Hard 4.0 or The Free or Die Hard if you're from outside Europe. Um, and just to start off with a bit of a shock, some some shocking news, Ryan. This film oh. is 15 years old. 15 years old. This have, is, that, is that right? Holy 2007. What? 15 years old. In fact, Live for, uh, uh, A Good Day at Die Hard is nine years old. Oh, my God. 2013. So... Dude, I was chatting to someone at work the other day. They were talking about 80s and stuff like that. And they said, uh, it's like, when were you born? They went, oh, 2000 and. I went, oh, there's an and in there. Oh, my God. I feel so old. There's, there's 2000 and? Uh, I feel like nearly fainted. These are a child, right? And they go, no, no, they're not. I'm like, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> you work out like, oh, 15 year old. I remember watching it at the cinema. I went to watch this, the, the Die Hard, uh, I'm going to say Die Hard 4, Die Hard 4 film at the cinema. And I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was a it was a pretty good film. Um, you could tell that old uh, old Bruce was getting on a bit. He was starting to kind of get. Uh, I think this was his start of his I don't care phase that really started the early kind of two yeah. thousands, and he just went, I hate life, and I'm going to make sure everyone knows that I hate them. <laughs> and he just well, kept, carried on doing. <laughs> well, yeah, he's just he's just uh, announced it. Well, his family announced his retirement, didn't they? Because yeah. it's quite it's quite sad. Because when you like have a read about what's happened, it sounds like for the past like five or so years, he's basically been getting lines fed through his ears, That's which right. I suppose, yeah, because he was, people have said like on sets, he was like looking confused as to why he was there and stuff. So, because I know they've really. said he's got, uh, is it asphasia or something like that? Um, which is like struggling with speech um, and you, you know, your brain and your cognitive abilities and stuff, which, which is sad really. Um, because he, he, he kind of, he did kind of a Nicolas Cage, didn't he? And he just kind of did every film they threw at him. But, the problem is he kind of he phoned a lot of it in, whereas at least Nicolas Cage, doesn't matter what he's in, there's always at least one scene where you go, yeah, all right, you, yeah, you're still in this, aren't you? But- he's batshit crazy. Nicolas Cage is literally the craziest man in Hollywood, and he always will be until the day that he dies, bless him. He's <sighs> in- absolutely insane, and I love him for it. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Have you done um, Face Off, Face Off, by the way? Have you, have you reviewed, reviewed that? Yeah, yeah. I, re- oh. um, I did it on my channel um, with... Brett and Leah from I Could Get It, this podcast. And I did it on Film Floggers with Ben and Dan Mackles, um, who got very annoyed at me because <laughs> because uh, he was talking about how, how you know, how you don't buy the premise, but you go along with it, which which I agree. But I also pointed out that a sheep was cloned in 1996, the year before the film came out, and he wasn't happy. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta well, love it, gotta love it. We yeah. try and kind of use logic to kind of be, no, no, there nope. is, and I tell you something, like, there is, there is rings that rule them all. I swear there is. Then the the, the, the Lord of the Rings fandom start kicking off at you. Oh, here we go. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so 17 years, 17 years old, is it you say? 15, 15, 15 that, years 2007 old. 2007 it Christ. came out, yeah. But yeah, I went to the cinema to watch it and I enjoyed it. I did like it. I thought it was a good, for, it was a good idea. I like it the way they kind of, yeah. instead of having it like a, it is a, an action film, but they used a little bit of like kind of new school stuff, like the new technology and stuff like that, and the way. And I'm going to say something controversial. I think that could happen in real life. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Especially now, yeah. I was going to say when I was watching this, things, especially after you know after after what happened the last few years, um, we've gone more towards working from home, Zoom meetings, other other type, you know, other platform meetings, yeah. and you know all this kind of stuff of doing it here and doing it there and doctor's appointments over the phone and just 
<laughs> I think we've gone more towards that. No, I'm not going to get political because I don't want them my show, of course. But uh, <laughs> I flirt with it. But uh, but <laughs> but it's just we've gone more for it, not less. I mean, I think they make a good point that a lot of the stuff is, is done by computers, but you'd have to physically go there and shut it down. Yeah. But I think you know, if anything, we've gone more in like 15 years. It's gone more towards computers, so it's a. Uh, it's uh, it's it's a funny one, isn't it? It's I do I do love the idea as well. I like the fact that they, I like like where John McClane is as a character and how he makes a point of saying stuff like, "Oh yeah, as a hero, you know, you you eat a lot of dinners by yourself, you know, you get a pat on the back, well done." But it's you know you, you don't want to be that guy. No one wants to no. be that. Guy. And I thought it's actually a a good film. It's the script's good. I I, I mean I I really enjoy it. I think it's got better with age, not worse. Yeah, it's a bit mm. silly at times, but it's a diehard film. <laughs> It's a guy had from you can't if they don't have a um a, a crazy stunt scene in it, yeah. um it's not a Die Hard film. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just well they had, and they had many they had many of them in this film. Oh, you, we'll get to those. Um, so the, the <laughs> yeah, so the title of the film, obviously outside of Europe, uh, is Live Free or Die Hard. Now that comes from the New Hampshire state motto, which is Live Free or Die. Uh, obviously they thought that us in Europe we wouldn't be able to understand, so they changed it to Die Hard Four Point why not leave it? I like the original. I think that, that I think that's a good. I, I never knew title. that was that was a reason why they did that because I was yeah. looked at it. You see it in the posters, and it's left free, die hard, and it's like die hard four point oh, and I'm like, okay, why are you doing that? I, and I that's been out, that's been out for fifteen years, and that's the first that's the only yeah, time yeah, I've realised yeah. that that's the reason why. Yeah, oh my they, god! Yeah. Because they thought it was a bit too, it was too niche. Like they thought, oh, people won't understand. Like people outside of like, you know, America won't understand that. So we'll change it to 4.0 in Europe. And it's like, why? Even if they didn't know it was a motto of it, we would have understood Live Free or Die Hard. It, it's a oh, good yeah. title. It's, it's a great than, title. Yeah, it's a great yeah, title. It's better than Die Hard 4.0. Like, it just, you know, it's like a <laughs> shampoo. Do... It's like a shampoo, isn't it? Head and shoulders, 4.0. Why like, the for... point oh, though? Why the point I don't oh? know. Is it, is it going to be a 4.0? Is it going to be a jackass? A 4.2? 4. 4. 2. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, because the did rated version, which I watched today, yeah. which is great. Um, it's diff- It's quite difficult to get a hold of one, but it, it's good to get a hold of. They're, they're great, but even in that, like that doesn't have a different title. That's not. It doesn't have like four point five. So <laughs> four point seven five two. Yeah, I just <laughs> with ten seconds extra to the square of pi and all that. I don't. I don't, I don't get it. Um, and this this film as well also has like the the um the, the other the other actors in it. You've got like Justin Long smashes it out of the park. You've got mm. Cliff Curtis, who's great in everything. He's a, he's a hallmark of quality. Yeah. He always tends to play like bit parts, but he's very good. Um, oh, what's his face? Kevin, what's his face? Smith, Kevin Smith. Oh, Kevin Smith, yeah, director. Yeah. It was oh, oh yeah, yeah. He's he did a, he's he's a uh, big director back then, wasn't he? And he was was he yeah. not the director of the actual film? Uh, no, no, it was uh, it was uh, Len Wiesman who directed Len this. Len Wiesman, because I know, because um, he's because I've watched a, a a few um like kind of st- I wouldn't say interviews with him. He was in a start, but did one at Comic Con. He did like an hour and a half talk, and he was going through a lot of um his experience. And one of them yeah. was, was with uh, Die Hard uh, with Bruce Willis, uh, and he says they hate each other so much so that it was nearly they couldn't be in the same room together it was it was horrendous so Ooh, that yeah. sounds good i so read the trivia sorry if you ever get a chance if you ever get a chance it's on youtube just type in kevin smith and it's on like it's about an hour and a half long but it's really interesting because yeah. he does a lot he did uh, like a dogma and clerks and all that sort of stuff he goes into that but he says he's one thing he goes into is uh a die hard four and him and bruce willis were let's say they don't go on it's quite fascinating well, that sounds pretty cool. I read in because I had a little bit a bit of trivia that I read that like Kevin Smith rewrote a lot of his lines, um, yeah. But Bruce Willis found them to be too comedic, and yeah. said it, they're too comedic. So then he, Kevin Smith, rewrote his lines to be a little bit, you know, a little bit calmer. But it's funny because there's there's alternate in the the DVD version I've got. There's alternative lines, so different to what you hear. Some of them are absolutely brilliant to the point where it's like, "Why didn't you leave that in?" So you know the bit where um, the bit where he throws the fire extinguisher and shoots at it. In in the bit where he says, "Oh, that's gonna wake the neighbors," he doesn't say that in this version. He just he just screams. It. He's like, he's like, "Get the fuck, get the fuck back in there!" And then the bit where he where he throws the fridge over, he's like, "Are you fucking nuts?" Get like it's it's much more diehard, you know. Oh man, um, I need to watch that now. I really want to get him. 
do you know what he calls him? You know, when he, he meets him, he's like, hey, dump truck. He calls him, hey, dump truck, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, instead of that, he calls him, he says, hey, Jenny Craig, which is, she's like a diet person over there, I think. Uh, <laughs> so, there's some great bits. It's like, you know what, the bit where he fires the hel- uh, the car at the helicopter. Great, by the way. Great oh, what, what, what I've seen great. that. Is that yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's one of the uh, best. He says, uh, he's, you know what he says to Mark McLean, are you all right? Instead of him saying, uh, instead of him saying, oh, I was out of bullets. You know what he says? Oh, you killed the helicopter with a car. Yeah. I was out of bullets. Instead of that line, he says, uh, thousands of people die in automobile accidents every year. That's just like four more. That's what he says. <laughs> and that's such a good line. I was like, yeah, that's Even great. the original, the original one was such a good line as well. I ran out of bullets. Yeah, that's yeah. like the most badass thing in the world yeah. to say. And then Cliff Curtis is currently, you know, the guy, like the head of the NSA, the National Security Thing me, he says, you know the bit where they say to him, "Oh, it was above your pay grade." Yeah. In my version, he goes, "I'm in charge of the security of infrastructure, you arrogant prick." And it's <laughs> like, and it's my, like it's much more like it's grittier. Like you don't need it; it's not bad to have it stripped out. But when you watch it, and like some of the like the the bit where they shoot all the technicians, you know, all the computer people, that's yeah. much more brutal in the version I've got because you see, like, you see them all get shot rather than it cut away. Um, yeah, so, I, think, I think I think was it a fifteen, wasn't it? That was uh no, it was a twelve A. Was that twelve A? I think it was twelve, which is like PG thirteen in America. I think. Yeah, I was going to say so. That must be the reason why they cut out so they could keep that twelve A rating. Then or pretty PG-13. much, yeah. Um, shit. yeah, but I mean, it wasn't too. It wasn't too bad. Um, oh, the bit at the beginning where John McLean's daughter's in it. She's good as well, Mary Elizabeth Weinstead. Yes. Um, and he like he like, pulls the guy out of the car. And then there's that whole scene, and he's like, and the guy's like, chicks, huh? And he looks at John McLean, and I'm like, read the audience, mate. Read the audience. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah. sort of, that's the sort of thing I would, I would, when you watch it as a father, I'd be like, yep, go on, Johnny boy. I'd, you're like, I'd do the exact same thing, but then realizing you wouldn't do that because you're so, you, you'd never do that. You'd just walk over and chap on the window and say, can you open the door, please? You would just yeah. smash the door open and drag him out. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I actually mixed up because I th- I thought because there's a scene. Funny enough, we were mentioning there's a scene similar to some face off where he smashes the car window and drags it. him out, and I, yeah. I'd mistaken. I thought, oh, he doesn't smash the car, but in this he just kind of like grabs him. But in the version I've got, he's like, and he's he says to the guy, "Shut up," and the guy's he's like, "Shut the fuck up," and it's like <laughs> that's what I mean. It feels a bit more, you bit know, more um, rugged. Yeah, um, I think that the premise of it's pretty good as well because obviously it only comes like six years after you know 9-11 and everything the scene of like the buildings exploding and the scenes of like you know that scene where they set off the anthrax labs and all those people flood out of the buildings yeah like, we'd seen that on the news so that was felt a bit more kind of real and stuff like that it was pretty and the, the whole bit with the cars because you think don't you like what happens if they just like flip them out the green and I know it just, that's like, it. it's just mad it's good it's good at the start of the way they built the story up from the beginning part of it when they were um, when he's he's doing his plan and he was getting the, the 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 programmers to do the job for them and then blowing them up at the end. Oh just, yeah, yeah. That was pretty cool. And I was like, that's clever. That's what like it's a diehard film that's got the action, but it's got a little bit of like kind of uh, intellect in there as well. Just to yeah, yeah. Cater yeah, to no. a lot of other people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I love the beginning. You know where they show the twentieth century Fox uh, or twentieth century studios it is now. And it shows that beginning bit, and then all, and it like, duh, 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 and it shows that, and then all of a sudden it's like, and all the lights start going out. Yeah, like, yeah, like I like it when films do stuff like that. Love um, small and, things. <laughs> it is. I'm it easily. I was going to say I'm easily pleased by small things, but that doesn't. Oi, sound oi. Like, is, it, is it past the watershed? Uh, uh, yeah, we're past nine o'clock. Yeah, we can say whatever we want now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Americans will not understand that one. They will not understand. Uh, right. Past the what? The watershed? Is, is there some sort go? of British porn site or something? Is that where you go to the toilet? Or the restroom? <laughs> um, so you can actually think of it, just completely tied away from it. If you actually stayed to America about watershed, they'd probably think it's some sort of torture technique or something. It's like, <laughs> where do you go? Is that so, so, so if you're bad or something? I don't, yeah, I don't, uh, maybe, yeah. That's fast. Well, I had to explain to an American what whinge meant. You know, my the whole CGI Whinge Fest series I've got going. <laughs> me, like, what's whinge mean i was like you know whinge because i was going to call it cringe fest and i thought that sounded too american so it i changed is. it to whinge fest and that they were like too british what does whinge mean i was like oh i might have missed the mark here see you could that's, that's an opportunity where you could literally say anything you could say whinge is something else you know you, you could, could. Oh, it's gonna be so you could. 
You, well, I had to, a, a couple, in fact, two of my episodes I've had, I've had to explain, you know, like, because Fanny means something differently over here, doesn't it? And you <laughs> hear it in American films, and it's like, what does that mean? And I'm like, um, um, it's like the, not the bottom of a woman, the other side. Like, oh, right, right. It's the front bum. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I love, um, <laughs> look at me trying to, look at me trying to soldier on with an actual review. It's not going to happen, is it? The wine's um, already, the wine is already going down nicely. To be fair, I'm not even an alcoholic. Um, I'm on, I bought these because it's a bit of a joke because they kept coming up that the decision reel mentioned them, Arnold Palmer, you know, half like tea, cold, uh, half iced tea, sweet tea and like lemonade. Ooh, so I got these, you. but I've had two of these, right? These are huge. The proper like one pack, yeah. But they've got, <laughs> you know how, many, how much sugar they've got in them? They've got 55 grams of sugar. Well, it looks and like somebody, someone's going to be doing the editing tonight. <laughs> You're not going to get, holy crap, you've got two yeah. of them. I know. Uh, I'm still yeah. halfway through one of them. So, I, yeah, you, I, so like, I went out, this is obviously we're on Sunday right now, and I went out Friday night uh, for my work do, and it was all expenses paid, and went into London, oh. and we had, uh, it was dangerous, mate. It was dangerous. Mm. I fell asleep in the toilet the train home. Oh, I've been to one um, of those once. All paved yeah. floor. Was yeah, bad. yeah. And uh, people had to bang on the door to wake me up. <laughs> <laughs> Get in. Not looking forward to going to work tomorrow because they'll I, remind me you were a no bed, Ryan. Anyway. I, you wonder why the trains are going on strike because the people are like, yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> That's true, it is. Why are you going on strike? That's the final straw. Some random Scottish guy just fell asleep. Yeah. On, Some on bastard the to sleep in that toilet. Yeah, I know, yeah. And I'm peeing in the corner because I don't know where to go. <laughs> Crazy. Um, uh, yeah, I um. I don't know. I was going with that to be honest. I was just yes. Oh, oh yeah. drinking alcohol. Yeah. Yes. So I had yes. a day off tomorrow. Yesterday I had a day off. I was literally going. No, I'm dying. And today I was like, nah, I've got a bottle of wine in there. I've got a podcast for sure. It's it's like a celebration of a year. Let's get this crack this bad boy open. Yeah, I was. I I've got a can of star primer downstairs. I was going to have, but no, I'm not feeling that. I had too much of a headache earlier. I feel like alcohol would just be tempting. Tempting fit, I think. <laughs> Too much for you. you like, <laughs> the thing is, you have, you have one. That's it. I can never have one. As you have one oh. can, you're like, nope. It's two, 20 cans later, the whole crate's gone, and you're now yeah. lying in a pool of your own vomit. It's well, so here's the fun. thing, right? Got a question for you on that, right? Ooh, Down God. south, they seem to call it, you know, you get the dreaded flavour, right, don't you? You know, when you get the flavour. Yeah, you get the right? taste for it, yeah. Yeah, what my dad calls it and what I call it, you know, this when you get the sniff of the barmaid's apron. You ever heard that phrase before? <laughs> No. Never heard that phrase before. I have never heard of that, but I so, love it. No, so basically, mate, it basically means I don't know if it's a northeast thing or a north thing or a Yorkshire thing. I'm not sure, right? Or a Sean but, thing. But my my dad thing, yeah. My <laughs> it's like my dad. My dad's dad uh, I never met, but he had his own sayings. So like he that that man's as light as a candy man's balloon. Oh, what was the other one? Um, he's wet as a can of piss. That's one of my favourites. I've he's seen wet that as a one. Yeah. Pissing. But um, no, this one is. Um, but my dad, it is. It's uh, when you go in and like you smell, you smell the lager, and it's the sniff of the barmaid's apron. It's like once you've got that, it's like you're, Game you're on. down in them. So yeah, that, that's what that means. It's not like an assault thing or anybody. If you're wondering, you don't <laughs> actually sniff the barmaid's apron. It's just a phrase. Is it, I feel I have guys, to say that. You guys feel like sitting there, God, looking at us, going, "You guys are crazy, man. Why are you sniffing pits? You know, what are you doing yeah. to the barmaid? Why are you sniffing barmaid's aprons? What are you doing? What are you what doing, are you man? Do- don't, I never I want to asked, go to a British pub in my life. I don't want to go don't, there ever. I got asked by Billy. He's like, so do you have beer that's warm? I was like, no, we don't have beer that's warm. Like, it's not chilled, but we don't have it warm. Like, oh, We don't have it warm, no. no. You, have, you can have cider warm, but that's basically no. psychopaths of that. No, it's, it's hot. It, cider's the kind of thing you drink when you're 15, and there's nothing else you drink, and Strongwell's cheap, and you buy it, and then you, you grow out of that pretty quickly. Yeah. Because you, you go develop there. a taste. Like, what is it you used to have up in Scotland when I was that age? It was like 14, 15. I used to have um, cider. It was a, uh, what was it? White Lightning. Oh, old... Scrumpy Jacks and stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah. The two, the two litre bottle was only £2 for a two litre bottle. That is dangerous. And yeah, yeah I used to get my sister. She was like three years older than I used to go to the shop and get it. I thought you were going to say she's three years old. I was like, whoa. No, no, no she's three years older than me. Scotland. And, uh, me, and my, me and my mates just go around the park and get pissed up on cider and just roam the streets like wrongings. <laughs> <laughs> those were the days, Sean, mate. They, those are the days. This is before Facebook and podcasts and all that shit. Yeah. You have to make your own entertainment. But don't you remember going around your mate's house and knocking on the door? You got to know your mate's mums, didn't you? Not in that way. Yeah. You got to know your mate, mom, mate's mums and you knock, knock. 
Hello, Mrs. Uh, Walker. It's Ryan. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. He's gone out. All oh, right, no problem. You have to it's watch the, it's the ones. It's the ones we don't even. You know, you've made the elite when you go around your mates. You don't even need to chat the door. You can just walk in, and they don't care. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's when you know you've you've made it. You are now part of their family. You yeah. don't care. Do you, want, do you want your tea? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And they don't even ask. They know you're coming round. They don't even know. <laughs> They know, yeah, right, right. I've done that with my mate. Ryan will be here in about five minutes, guarantee. And they could literally know by clockwork because he used to have a, a plate of dinner for me. <laughs> my, 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 my parents did look after me, obviously. But uh, when I went around there, it's good fun. Yeah. Oh, man. I wish I was young again. It's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I did, you don't realize how, how the, the difference in generations, like, because obviously when I, when I was lifeguarding, I worked with people, what I would call kids. They weren't actual kids, but mm. just the phrase of where I live. Like eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one year olds, and just like this, obviously there the would be. They're so different. They're like ten years younger than I am. Like it, it's just totally different. Like in the way they think, the way I used to talk was edgy. I'd be like, I'm not edgy. I just, <laughs> I'm just quite blunt sometimes. I'm not rude, but I'm just like yeah. say it as it is. Like because I think that generation's a little bit more, not to get political, but they're a little bit more wary of what to say. I'm not saying it's a bad thing or a good thing. Sitting on the fence firmly on this one, but they're sitting on the fence. Just, God, you're, always, you're always on neutral. my ass, haven't I? You're always neutral, you should. I tell you, fuck it, I'll do the bad thing. They don't know how good they've got it, Sean. That's the fucking thing, is no, the bastards. Uh, wait, till the power cut, wait till the power cuts roll in, then they won't be feeling so fucking smug, will they? <laughs> Invest in some coal, let's go knock some trees down. <laughs> um, oh god, yeah, um. Where the hell were we up to? Yeah, I like I like this. this suppose we were cool. suppose we reviewing a film show. I don't we're, know. We're meant to be. I think. Yeah, we keep keep forgetting. <laughs> we always do this. The last three times we've done this podcast, the same together. We've done exactly the same. We always go off in tangents. I, I love it. And but I love the fact that you go with me on the tangents, and you'll take your tangents because I've had some, not many, because obviously I've got my my like nice little crew, and I, I'm happy to grow it. But there's a few people that come on, and then they haven't. Been back because you can see sometimes people get frustrated by it. They get oh. frustrated that you've gone off the point, and it's like, look, I'm I'm meant to be like a podcaster. If you're not good at talking, you're not, like no offense. It is a skill to talk to people. My it job's is. all about talking to people. It's loads of different people every day, so I get used to toning how I talk to certain people. And mm. I'll go off and I'll say this. And I'll, but if it wasn't about that, then what do you? <laughs> I get, I, there's nothing wrong with doing a straight review of like mm, this happens and this, but that's not that's not my podcast. Boring, not man. what it ever will be. Who wants that? Because <laughs> I have I've done some before where you can see the person there go. Mm. A- anyway, yeah. back to the film, and I'm like, oh, all right, yeah, sorry, I was just in the middle of the oh, story. Like, yeah, if, they, go for it. if they want to be like that, just switch on the BBC and do that. That's their sort of review shows that you remember they used to have that used to be all about the films and stuff, and it's like, oh my god, this is so. Oh my god, I remember that. Oh yeah, well, Kamal's left, hasn't he? He's gone and done his own thing. He's got a podcast with uh, who is it? Mail or Kamal and Mail? So is it? They call the two so. reviews. Something like that, yeah. But I don't know. No. it's just Not that's the thing. It's just like everyone, everyone wants to do podcasting now, isn't it? It's like the the new trendy thing, and I always yeah. love it because uh, obviously I, I work in recruitment, so it's a lot of salesy and stuff. And every every I'm on LinkedIn all the time, and I see all these people come and have my podcast. They do one episode, they never go back to it. Yeah, and it's yeah. They always the rule of thumb: if you can get past seven episodes, you've kind of nailed it. You're, you're going to carry on doing it, and you never hear from them again. They always, it's all these people. We're going to start a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're not. You're going to do like three episodes, not see people listen to it, and get pissed off and not do it again. Simple as that. Well, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll be going a year because uh, people talk about their. Pitch. Some people don't seem to like to talk about the view and stuff again. And I was quite quiet for a while, but I am because like, some people. I think my podcast gives the wrong impression because I do so much. People was oh, yeah. he's really popular. Well, I'm, I'm not particularly. My audience, my average audience is 15. It's not a lot. It's all right. So if I didn't do it for the... Well, yeah, exactly. I've been talking to some, some people I collaborate with who are still on like three or four, but they've only been going six months. It's it's not easy. Like some people's... You get the wrong impression with Twitter and stuff. Some people's takes off and they get like 20,000 views in a year. Yeah. Good for you, mate. Like, however, like spot on. You've clearly tapped into something. You've done really, really yeah. well. I'm do you know what they've really ta- for that. Do you know what they've tapped into? They've <laughs> tapped into fucking buying the listeners from... Places like Fiverr and all that sort of stuff. Well, That's what they've been listening. It's not something I know about. It, it genuinely isn't. That? <laughs> I've seen it before. You see, I've, I, I get so many on Instagram uh, coming through to my DMs. Oh, I can. I if you give me like two hundred bucks a month, I'll advertise your show out, and I get all this. And they're all bots. They're all bots listeners. And um, I'll tell. You, I actually did it once. Uh, I gave I gave this guy like ten quid, and he said, "Right, go on, see what you can do for me." 
and he gave me like 200 views. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay. But then the next day, just dropped down completely. Nothing. I was <laughs> like, okay. You're obviously just using bots to fucking do it. So I just decided yeah. to fuck, mug that guy off. So anyone who's doing more, if they're doing a podcast, as I say, they must be doing something great or they're paying fucking for the, for the listeners. That's the same sort of thing. Yeah, it's 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 tough, isn't it? It's, uh, it, it, it's strange. I don't know. So, But I, I do it because I enjoy it. I've said That's before, I like, if I didn't release this, I, I'd have still have a fun conversation out of it. The episode to do with Bill, if I, I've said to him, if I didn't release those, I'd still have a good laugh. Yeah, the exactly. ones I do with Ben from Film Foggers, because I've slowly but surely worked my way in with him. Um, <laughs> it's just taken me a year of simping. Um, <laughs> have you really? Have you really been like, I love you, Bill. You're amazing. I love your show. No, no, he's he's a he's a good lad. But I do, I do genuinely like. I do genuinely love the show. The first one I listened to, I typed in film podcast, and his was the first that came up. And yeah. I kind of modelled mine slightly after that. And uh, he's he's a good lad. But he's exactly what my sense of humour is like. Really sarcastic. Really mm. dry. Moans a lot. The episodes are just him and his girlfriend Fiona. He's moaning about the sound quality and this, that, and the other. And I, I think they're hilarious. <laughs> That's uh, the I thing. Really the thing is, is what the good thing about why I think you're going to have a really good um, uh, the next year is going to be fucking awesome for you because what you're doing now, you're you're um, you're paying your dues and all that. You always have to set the foundations up first. But then the good thing about what you do as well, you actually give back to the community too. You actually get involved with other people's shows, and a lot of the people out there are very selfish when it comes to their own content. They think if I'm going to put it out there. I'm very sad. I want. Why is no one listening to me? Because you don't walk into a room and expect people to bombard you when they don't even know who the fuck you are. No. So this is the thing. You have to give back to the community. You have to love the community before the community loves you. And this is what I think. Why what you're nailing to be fair, because you've opened yourself up to that and you're commenting on people's posts and you're getting people involved in it. And I think that's that's. There's a lot. If you want to take this as a little be we do things if you listen to this you want to start a podcast make sure you love that community first because don't expect them to love you if you don't love them no it's it's uh and it's just about being like like and don't be afraid of your own not that i know a lot but don't be afraid of your own opinion if you don't like something just admit don't be like oh i like it because other people like it just be yeah. honest like i've got like josh from the talking smack podcast which is superheroes movies animation and comics i have to say that because there's about four of them like different, I'll call that right. So get the right one, yeah. So his is all about comics. Of it, theirs is doing really well, and understandably so. It's brilliant. Uh, if you love like really geeky stuff, I've listened to a few and enjoyed them. But I'm not massively into the Marvel stuff. But if you are, yeah, no wonder it's flying. But he's great. He shouted me out on like I think a year. A year they've had a year back or something. I think they've been going for a while. But he was like, uh, he was just like, even though. Like you don't love Marvel, like I still enjoy your podcast. And I thought, like, hey, that's what it's about. That's what I want. And you don't have to agree with me, but if you enjoy it, you enjoy like you enjoy it. But no, you are right because some people sometimes you have people on, and I always and I say it to everybody, I would always go back on theirs. Always if they wanted it, very few people have come back and said, oh yeah. So you like you do wonder sometimes. Is it like are people? I don't know why you try and use me because I'm not going to get you many views, but <laughs> but like well, I've been on. You, this is now the fourth time. Uh, this is now the fourth time that um I've been on your show, and you've not even came on my show once. So it is well over. I keep asking you, and you keep ducking me. So you're coming on. <laughs> We're going to organise it this time. You're coming on, and you can, we could just literally get past the top bullshit because that's what my show is all about. Sounds good. I had to, I had that on there. I went on the, the decision reel. And obviously, they they record this. And I was like, look, because we all work for it, it's not appropriate to be recording, right? So, like, my face. So, <laughs> such is life. Uh, so, you, you can see them talking, but you can just hear me in the background, some grouchy northerner. Yeah. And, um, but they got more, I couldn't see, I, I couldn't see them because okay. of, because of, like, if I saw them, anyone else. But they got more and more pissed. Like, they were on, like, drinking, and it got more and more. But their, theirs was quite funny because I think sure at a certain point one of them was like, shut up, hang on. And then one of them kept interrupting me. Then the other one's going, would you stop interrupting him? It was such a good laugh. <laughs> it was so much fun. Uh, but yeah, but those, and people seem to want to come back. Like that, that's what I'm, I genuinely enjoy. Like, like yourself or other people, like I'm constantly surprised because I am. I'm, I'm quite humbled by the fact people want to come back and say, oh, can I come? Because they defend it yourself. People want to come and do another one. Oh, yeah. I've got another film. Knock yourself out. Like when I put that post out and I got, I was like, Jesus Christ, like almost to the point of right, how am I going to organize all this? That's it. But, uh, but it's yeah, flattering. It's, it's, it's good. good it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. It's feel. nice. 
It's nice. It's good, um, it's good to know that you're doing something right. That's the main thing. Because in yeah. this game, you very, very rarely get any feedback from anyone. Oh, yeah, Even if you yeah. ask for it, you're never going to get it. So you're just going to have to play it by doing. And the only way to really judge that is by what interactions you get. And when you don't get any interactions, it's hard to judge it. And uh, that's just, unfortunately, the way of the game, unfortunately. Yeah, I know. I think that's the... Because a lot of podcasters, I'm not going to do it, but a lot of podcasters, fair play to them, have, have started to push onto YouTube. And I'm like, well... I'm on there. Yeah, but and it's like I know you can get a lot more feedback from it that way. Oh, the uh, reason why I but, do it is because I use it uh, on my hosting platform is Podbean. That does it automatically. I don't. Oh, there you go then. Yeah, it just pops up there. But um, every now and again, I might kind of edit a video and just because yeah. I use a, a, a video made as well and I post it up there. But I tell you what, editing a video and going through that is such a fucking yeah, bolly. I tell you, this is why I don't want to do it because I know YouTube. I know a couple of people who do it. Um, and you have to like say how much swearing's in it and what you talk about, and I'm like, that's too yeah. much. Not that God, you listen to my man, aren't exactly edgy, but I just think I couldn't be doing it. I, I probably because I do too much, but I enjoy it. I, I have enough to be getting on with. I don't want to be sorting out a YouTube star <laughs> either. As, but, as a, to be a YouTuber is a full time job, and I get that. Yeah. Um, but it's just too much, you know. You have to spend like three hours, then you have to upload it. It takes about four hours, depending on your internet speed, and then you have to use fucking editing software. Hey, just give me a box standard editing software. I can do a podcast. That's all I'm what, looking for. Yeah. Want yeah. From that. Same with me. We're simple creatures, so don't we? We're simple guys. We, we are, don't want we anything are. else. We are. What can you do? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, where the hell are we up to? Yeah, the film, the script, right? So, um. That like I like the script. Keep talking. I'm, I'm going to get some more wine. Hold on. <laughs> so now I'm just plugging whilst uh, Ryan uh, goes to get my wife. Fantastic. Um. So basically, the uh, I like the script. The whole you know, like John McClane's pretty cool. The whole like not today waxworks is the circus in town. Oh, I love the bit where he. St- to be fair, probably what he'd do if you look around my room, where he looks at like the guy's action figures. He's like not spending a whole lot of time with ladies, huh? Like, I just, <laughs> there's some there's some great lines in here. It's always when you see it with, with John McClane. Why isn't every Die Hard film the beginning of it? He's such a bum. I mean, you think know. he'd like to take some of his fame. He's basically saved like a, a, quite a, about what, a thousand people all through the way through the, oh, the first yeah. three films. You think he'd be a little bit famous, have a book deal, at least do a podcast or something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Get himself a little bit more extra side hustle, you know? But nope, he's a bum and no one likes him. For oh, fuck's you know sake, what? man. Not to get us in. Oh, sorry, I want to go on this tangent. What would John McClane call his podcast? Pod Free or Die Hard? Or, or, uh, <laughs> Die Hard 5.1. <laughs> Pod Point 1. I don't know. What would he call it? Oh, I, I don't like know. Oh, that's a good one. I don't know. It'd be something, it'd be something like um, uh, Happy Kaye, Mother Poddles or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. We, just made yeah. a, we just made up a new podcast. <laughs> I know. Damn it. I'm trademarking that before anyone steals it. Uh, <laughs> To be fair, the only idea I ever had was to get my dad to do podcasts, which was literally because my, my dad's like, oh, dad, did you see this film? He'd just be like, oh, absolutely shit. What a waste of my time. And that would be it. That would be the review. Done. Ended. Just like 30 seconds about it. Absolutely terrible. What you should do, you should make that into a little segment then. You should make it into the dad the dad segment. What do you think of the film? Shit. And there you go. And that's it. It could be a little mini segment you could, put, you could clip into your... That's a really good idea, actually. Yeah, I might. I'll ask him. Well, my mum comes on my episodes every now and again. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's always been quite well uh, quite well received, so... Um, oh, what else? Yeah, oh, yeah, the whole... Um, what does it say? Dispatch 1047s or whatever. And she's like, oh, yes, we've had to dispatch all units. At Maggie Q. And he's like... Well, you had to dispatch all, you. all, the, all the naked people running around. He's like, cut the bullshit, honey, <laughs> and put your bars on. I, I love, love that. that. Yes, I honestly think that John, uh, John McClane is a more badass in this film than he has been in the first three. Where he just His interactions with people. Oh, I think yeah. that he's, he's way more. In the first three, he's been more like shooting the shit and doing one-liners. These ones, he's, he's more clever. He's yeah. like, can I go, nah, 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 I'm trying to trick you now. And then shoot you in the face after. Yeah. Well, he's, he's older. He's like more... He's like more grizzled, isn't he? You can see he's like a bit beaten down and he's just like fed up. He's like, you, there's a real sense of, oh, here we go again, type thing. Yeah. Like, oh, for God's sake. It's like, oh, he's oh, a veteran. Oh. Well, yeah, you get the feeling he hasn't done this in like a long time. Because, I mean, mm. like Die Hard, I mean, Die Hard with Avengers is 1995. This is 2007. Jeez. So if it's real life, it's 20 years. So if he's like 50 in this, whatever he was, in the last, so it's like from 30 to 50, he's had a, a career where he's just, he stayed as a, de- as a detective. 
Yeah. Um, like at the beginning, he doesn't know about they've lawjacked the cars because the guy's like, "What are you doing at Reuters, which is like university? Like, what are you doing there?" He's like, "How how do you know?" He's like, "We, it's like we lawjacked the cars like five years ago. Like, where 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 have you been?" Yeah, um, I know that. So, I didn't so know what lo- I didn't even know what Lojack was when I watched that film. I remember because I used to go, "What the fuck is Lojack?" I keep yeah, hearing yeah. American films what Lojack was, and well, I had to yeah. I obviously googled it at the time. I went, "Ah, yeah, they do." They've you know, got you know, a, we, a lot. We don't really of... have it over here, do we? Oh no, no, we do, we do. Do we have that? Yeah, yeah. So like a uh, police, fire brigade, ambulances—they're all tracked. Oh, they are tracked. Oh, they? Pretty, oh. Well, c- c- well, I don't know if they all are, but a lot of uh, because if they're emergency vehicles, they kind of need to know where they are because if you dispatch. If a police car or a fire engine is in one place, they'll say, oh, you're the nearest or you're the nearest if, if they're out and about rather than at the station or whatever. So, get that, get that. Go. You'd have to know where they are. See, there yeah. you go. That's, see, you, people say, why do you listen to podcasts? Because you learn something. Any podcast yeah. you'd learn, every day is a school day here. Reveal yes. yourself and learn something as well. Here's one as well that I didn't know. Oh. Did you know uh, the, word str- uh, the word desserts? It's stressed backwards. Didn't know that. Quite cool, isn't it? That's actually that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, I know. So if you're stressed, equal desserts. I'm just I'm just saying. In moderation, you know if you say you know if you say Jesus backwards, it sounds like sausage. <laughs> or God backwards, it's dog. Hey, we we could we fuck, fuck the film. We're on a fucking massive tangent now. <laughs> we've gone down. The, 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 we've crossed the line. The line is a dot to us right now, Sean. We're, the, yeah, Love we're, it. we're that down the rabbit hole. We've gone past fucking Alice. That's how far down the rabbit hole we are. <laughs> yeah, the bad heart have waved past as we ran <laughs> past them. Hey, God. Um, God well, past we're, Alice. We're just... <laughs> oh, that tickled me. That one, sorry, mate. It's a no. It's. Um, where we? Oh yeah, I, I liked uh, Justin Long as well. I thought he was pretty funny because he he plays like dead wimpy at the beginning, doesn't he? He's like, could could we go in and get some ketchup packets? Uh, my blood sugar's yeah. really low. And you're like, oh, get a grip! Like you're with John McClane. Like get a grip, man! Come on. What's um, happened to him recently? Because he was in a really that was really the start of him being pretty awesome, wasn't he? He was in all these pro- probably like high profile films and roles, and it just went downhill from him then, didn't it? I don't know where he. Uh, I think he's been doing television. Was it television? Think... He was doing. He did like dodgeball. Obviously, he did Jeepers Creepers, which was a a, a good film. Um, and then he did dodgeball the as well. Third one of those, haven't they? Oh, yeah, that was controversial, though, wasn't it? Because the guy was um, a bit of a wrong one, wasn't he? The director. Oh, I don't know. I'll have to. I'll have to look into that one. Yeah, that's um, supposedly. I think the original, the director, was a bit of a wrong, and he used to like kind of um, oh, do dear. wrong things. So he didn't. That, so it's been like released. It was made like four years ago. They've only oh, just released it. I didn't know because that. of that. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, um. Yeah, no, I, I mean, he, I think by looks at, looking at a quick Wikipedia search, he, he's uh, he kind of went into TV things by the looks of it, at least the last 10 years or so. So he did like, uh, he was in F is for Family and stuff like that. He's, he's not done a lot of films. Well, yeah, he did like Drag Me to Hell in 2009. That was the last time I remember seeing him. That's a good film, isn't it? Yeah, great. That's a good uh, film. And then he was in The Wave 2019 and Barbarian 2022. Oh, and he, he did the voices in the Alvin and the Chipmunks of, of Alvin, apparently. Oh, I didn't know that. Jesus. There you go. Yeah. So. Imagine that. What, what's, your, what's in your CV, Alvin and the Chipmunks? Yeah. But basically, yeah. you just spoke into a mic and they just basically kind of yeah. changed the tone of it and pitched it up really yeah. high. Off your tits on helium for a couple of months, yeah. <laughs> you, have to, you have to go to rehab for a helium fucking addiction now. <laughs> oh, don't. My sister passed out from helium at my 18th birthday party. She, <laughs> really? she collapsed and... Do you know? Uh, do you know what she? Well, she fainted. And do you know? Do you know the end? Um, just from that, because she was she was only a teenager herself. Do you know the the bars you get in the old working men's club? Do you know the, yeah. the the brass whatever it's called on the bottom of the bar? I don't know what it's called. You know. Yeah, you always put your yeah. feet on it, don't you? It's yeah, just yeah. there to just make yeah, yourself like, look cool she, or something. She, yeah, she, she thinks she keeled over and hit her head off that. Something. So she disappeared out. She was all right. She was fine. Uh, but she she dis she disappeared <laughs> after my birthday. She's all right now. Where, she walks in circles. <laughs> She walks with a bit of a, a kind of Where, a, a where's dodgy my circle sister? Now. Where's my sister? Oh, she's at the hospital. I was like, what? So yeah, my, I didn't get hospitalised my 18th, but my sister did. No, that's, just, like, that's, just, that's, just, that's just the way it should be, mate, to be quite honest with oh, you. Really. She, she was fine. Uh, no, right. She's all good, bless um, her. Yeah, just don't, just don't do helium. That's all I'm saying. Um, oh, where were we up to? Oh, yeah. And I like kind of the, the sass <laughs> that his character gives back, especially the FBI guy. He's like, oh, yeah, you've done a bang-up job so far. 
and then where that woman says to him like look, look it does and he's like please tell me she's just here for decoration she's not in charge of anything i thought there was just some great stuff in there i think it's some of the bits that he does especially in the beginning part of the film oh just along with his hacking skills are a little bit kind of really can you do that Especially when he grabbed the guy's mobile phone and hooked it up, and he was doing all this stuff just using phone. Apparently, apparently you can. You pr- well, at least you, you know when. Apparently, you can. I don't know if you can still do it now. Well, well you can do it now, you, definitely. But well, back yeah. then, could you do stuff like that back then, like hack into like stuff with a phone? I presume so. I mean, it's like a person. It's like a pom pom thing, isn't it? I don't know. Maybe. I want to. I want to. I want to get. I want to delve deeper into this. I was, ha- I was happy. I'll... I was happy to go with it, but <laughs> I was going to go. I want to know. I want to know. Could you? I mean, it's like. Could you hack in to like the government website with a Nokia thirty three ten? No, you play Snake. Exactly. And, uh, why? Why would you want snake. to when you can play Snake? <laughs> yeah, why would you want to? Oh, I've got Snake, man. I don't give a shit about. I don't care. Yeah, I can play Snake. I've got predictive text in this I thing. Can like, you know I, mean? I can send a polyphonic. I can send a polyphonic ringtone to Ryan using infrared, holding up onto him. Why would I? Do you I know? Change my case. Do you know what? To, Make me look gangster and yeah. show off my personality. Do you, know what I, do you know what I had? Do you know what I had on my Nokia 3310? I had a plastic cover that was blue, but it had the Union Jack like around it. Mate, I had the Scottish flag. I had the <laughs> Scottish flag on it. I had the oh, Scottish flag on mine. No just, just in case you couldn't tell that I was Scottish, you know, yeah, I bring up my phone. Oh, he's Scottish, he is. Yeah, while he whacked you on the head with it, you're like, oh, Scottish as it came down. Um, uh, so, right. uh, they kill you those things, but you're not getting it on the head by enough. You say it's you ten, you'd be out. Oh mate, these um, things are literally indestructible. Honestly, I know? saw a video with a guy right had a Nokia uh, thirty three ten. It was a thirty three ten and a thirty three. No, it was switched off for about for about since about two thousand four. Uh, it, it switched it back on and it had two. It still had half battery left on it. Yeah, I know it's ridiculous. Like, what? I mean, uh, what um, what was I going to say about it? Yeah. Um, that's another thing you talk about generations. I was I was lifeguarding. I was talking to a twenty year old lad, uh, another lifeguard. There was somebody lifeguarding by the way at this point. Uh, on break we were talking, and um, he, <laughs> why did I feel the need to say that? He um he 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 said I told him about infrared. He was on about Bluetooth. I said, oh these Bluetooth earphones and stuff, pretty cool. Um, and about because I didn't realize you could talk to your watch and it would put it in text. I was like, what? I, I'm getting old, right? So he, <laughs> in terms of technology. And I said, oh, yeah, like, before Bluetooth, like, you you, you had, like, infrared and polyphonic ringtones. You used to have to hold oh, yeah. your phones together to send, like, all break time, 15 minutes holding your phone next to your mates to try and get, you know, the polyphonic ringtone of baby one more time sent across. And um, he, he was like, no, that's not real. You're joking, aren't you? He thought I was joking. He genuinely thought I was making it up. Makes um, you cry, doesn't it? it? Well, yeah, another thing, like, accents change as well. So, like, I know it's a slightly Scottish thing, but where where I live, it, it was, it, it wasn't part of Scotland, but we had like Robert the Bruce was down here and stuff, and, and stuff. So it, there's a few influences from all over the place because it's a new place. That's kind of why we sound a bit scout and a bit this and a bit that. So <laughs> I would, I would say, um, instead of old fella, I, so old man, for anybody listening, I would say old, old fella, which is a Scot, old is a Scottish thing. Um, old mate, yeah. And what one, one of the. Young lads and was like, why? Why do you and so and so, who's your age, why do you say old? Because they are an old fella. <laughs> what do you mean? And uh, <laughs> so that's what I mean. Like accents change as well. So it's a, uh, it's very, it's very odd, but it's, it's good fun. Um, are people gonna listen to this shit? Like this has gone all over the place. Maybe good fun, though, yeah. F- fuck them. Fuck um, <laughs> I love that. You certainly got fuck my audience. Fuck them. <laughs> oh, well. Um, I was I was gonna go down I was gonna go, down, go to, uh, to show off. Uh, you say that you're on. I was gonna go down the the MSN messenger route before that. After that, to be honest. Jesus man. Do you know how that? Do you remember? Do you remember when you used to be able to click and it used to shake your friend's oh, screen? Oh, that was amazing. That was amazing. Why did yeah, you get rid yeah. of that? You go do 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 do. Yeah. That. <laughs> and it was a- AS- ASL. Age, sex, location, and it's like, have you got a picture? And it's like, no, I've not got a scanner. <laughs> and I'm talking, and I'm talking to these kids at work, right? And these are like 21, 22 year olds, right? And I'm obviously not 21, 22. I'm, I'm a, a seasoned veteran, and uh, I'm talking about this. And they're like, what? What's a scanner? I goes, well, uh... back in the day, you didn't have this. And when they scanned the picture, it was always a, a picture going down. It used to like kind of when you scan it and it, you send it to your computer, it just goes down and goes dead. <laughs> 
doing doing like that and it's <laughs> always like it's always a holiday picture and it's like with them their family it's a family picture they go that's me in the middle and you're like oh, oh very good holiday it looks really nice yeah. it's like fuck it hell msn messenger god what a, what a time to be alive Sean. Well, well you remember when you're on facebook you used to be able to pork people as well like, and you, <laughs> what happened to poking poking is know. literally it it's went, like oh you? this this girl really likes me do you remember? She, she poked me yeah. been, i've been I've been poking her for the past six months. Do you, yeah, do you, do you remember? Do you remember when you used to you used to be able to tell? This is all you used to be able to tell if a last liked you or not, or a boy. If that's your thing. That's um, it. They liked all your photos. Do you remember? You'd like that's log it. on one day and twenty four likes of the same person. And all your photos, you're like, I- I'm in. I'm in here. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And, now, and now your class is a stalker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You weirdo, why are you liking all our pictures? I like the pictures, like I swear. MySpace as well. Do you remember, like, you used to My be able space. to, remember your little bio? You used to be able to put, like, a little, a little, like, piece of music. <laughs> yep, yep, I remember that. I'm, so you pre- to make it. I'm pretty sure, oh, no, well, I'm trying, uh, Fire was, was one of mine. I, I had that good, was... I had good Charlotte is mine. Yeah. You know, what one was that? It goes, uh, Life Dies of the Richard of Famous. Oh, yeah. One. I had that one going. I had, uh, oh, okay, I had uh, yeah. singing involved. Is this the first time someone's been singing on your podcast? I love it. Uh, well, I've sang on my birthday ones. I sang my happy birthday to myself. Oh, oh no! This is the saddest no, thing I've ever heard in my life. No, but it was meant to be. <laughs> no, but it was meant to be a joke because it's like. Oh, okay. Because it's like because I've tried. I started really positive. Like, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Oh, with you yourself. That's what it was meant with the joke. Ah, uh, okay. I thought you just came on and goes, my birthday, I'm going to sing I mean, happy birthday clear, clearly, to myself. Clearly it's shit. Because even describing <laughs> it back, it's like, that's shit. But at least... In my head, it. it was a good idea at the time, I swear. Now I'm telling you it back, it's some shit. Uh, <laughs> um, Die well, hard. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> are we supposed to be reviewing a show right now or a film? I don't, I, know. I don't know. What are we doing? What is life? Dying on our ass. I don't know what die hard. Um, Special Agent Johnson would meet another one of those. Um, and I, I again. love again how McLean gets uh, like he rants about the situation he's in. You know the bit where he's climbing over the cars. He's like, "Don't can I can I have a normal cop job? Got to be a special detective." And I was <laughs> like, "I love I love that about his character that he's like because you would. Can you imagine if you were in this situation? Morning. You would mourn like hell, wouldn't you? Laugh? Yeah, you say. would." You would, and it's because he's that sort of age, and he's that sort of like kind of mentality. You would just sit there and moan like hell all the way through it, wouldn't you? Yeah, but like, I should be at home watching aircraft investigation. Yeah, I'm being watched doing this shit. So, <laughs> oh, it's great. Um, yeah, something I've seen about this film <laughs> to get serious. Um, that like Ooh. the villain. Yeah, yeah. Who indeed? The villain is like Timothy Oliphant, who plays Gabriel somebody. What's his name? Whatever his name is. Somebody Gabriel. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that quite liked him as a, as a villain in this, to be honest. Very memorable, clearly. Uh, but well, is that the, that's the main is that the main villain? Yeah, the main the main fella, yeah, who's going out with the... That's right, because this is like the first one of the whole series that I was watching. He he's not like he, he's not like a big tough guy. He's just basically a, a computer guy. And he's yeah, yeah. he's basically a massive fanny. Well, but he hides this... behind it. He is literally, he's a keyboard warrior. That's what he is. Oh, yeah, 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 he is. He's the world's most intelligent troll, isn't he? I mean, he says that he's, <laughs> he's like, I put this, he's like a rather understated villain. Um, but it fits the character. He's a computer programmer. He's not going to be like, you know, no. Jean-Claude Van Damme. Um, is there a more, or The Rock for anybody who's more modern. Um, oh, I can't believe I've just, uh, why have I just compared those two? That's not like for like. Um, the different, like, yeah, yeah. The different versions I've got as well. <coughs> like, you know the bit where the mum comes to the door and she's like, Freddy, you got company. In, in my version, she's like, Freddy, get the fuck up here. And it's, <laughs> it's mint, honestly. Um, oh, brilliant. It really is. It's some, it, if, if you can get all of the unrated, anybody, it is, it's well worth it. Uh, I actually I'm, really want to see it. I really want to see it now, to be honest. It's really good. There's, it's not massive changes, but it's more like, just the, the lines, that stuff, and it, there's bits of swearing, and it feels more diehardy, like it's yeah. a bit sharper. Um, and like I love the soundtrack because obviously the, the, I didn't notice the guy who um, did the soundtrack for the first three had like died by this point. Um, oh really? Yeah. So they had to get somebody else, um, and he like incorporated 
because I love the like this like the little stings of music you get, you know, when they're walking through the basement again. Because that basement where they're walking for like that technology woodlawn place, they used that for Die Hard Two, you know, for like Dulles Airport. So they've been there before. Obviously, right. it was a bit different. So, but they were put in later on. Uh, you know, like the bit with the bit with like the tunnels and the uh, the, the oh the car in the elevator as well. The whole yeah. she was headed to. The last time I saw her, she was uh, at the bottom of an elevator shaft with an SUV round over her ass and all that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was a good fight scene as well. Yeah, well, you, you wouldn't get that now, though, would you? No, you would. You wouldn't you get. Go, you couldn't get away with that. A main character, like mind you, she gives as good as she got. Well, Maggie Q is a fucking gangster, isn't she? Yeah. She she's a fucking yeah. Pff, outstanding. Well, the, the stunt woman uh, um, uh, kicked like John McClane with a spiked heel. <laughs> uh, and like spliced his like his brow, you could see his brow bone. It spliced that open because apparently oh, in shit. certain parts of the film you can see the stitch, but I, I didn't spot. He's that covered in blood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He got you. To be fair, uh, he, she gave him a fucking good kicking. Oh yeah, quite yeah. Honest, eh? And it's, he was uh, just he's he. The only reason why he survived is because he's just basically he he can take a beating. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> just, he did out. He did out smarter. That out. But he just took. He's able to take a beating. He's like the Homer Simpson and the uh, when he does the boxing episode, where he just oh. stands and takes a kicking, and then yeah. the guy's too tired and just Homer just punches him. That's basically what happened. Pretty much. And uh, the bit with uh, you, you Matt, the Matthew Farr character kills the guy because there's a guy shooting like down the elevator oh, shaft at right, John, yeah. and he like wangs him in the back. That's hits him for the Americans, um, and uh, he like falls like to the bottom of the elevator shaft, pretty much. Uh, that's that's pretty cool because he, he you see his character change. Yeah, yeah. Through, through the, the whole, back, well. you, yeah, you could tell through the whole film he starts to kind of evolve a little bit more, and he starts to kind of get a little bit more. It, well, he, he gets more. He, he grows a set of stones, doesn't he? He grows yeah, a set yeah. of balls, and he starts to do certain things, and and that obviously amalgamates up and, and comes to a peak at the end. When you see him in the big face off at the end, but yeah, that's really the, the the pivotal time when he was like, "Yeah, I need to step up now and stop paying yeah. and shitting myself all the time." And Cause, do the bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah, because he fall when the bit where he like, there's I tell you what there is, there's a lot of blood loss and there's an awful lot of characters falling from a great height, hitting a few things and living. Um, <laughs> all that bit where he's like, "Damn hamster," and he kicks that guy and he falls in that, <laughs> and he's like, "And I love because the reactions the same in the unrated and rated versions." Where yeah. John McClane's just like, oh, oh no! Like when he sees the guy, like he sees the, the guy, screen, like, like I love that. That's horrible. But uh, the, yeah, you see that with Farrell's character when he uh, he falls down and he he gets trapped and he just kicks out like this panel to get out. And I'm like, yeah, he's he's getting better. <laughs> he's getting better. He's getting there. Bless him. He's doing his best. But then you get the daughter, and obviously they kidnap the daughter, and she says, uh, "You're gonna need to," because um, he says something to her like, "Oh, we don't want to antagonize them. We've got guns and everything." And she's like, "Look." You're gonna to have to dig deeper for a bigger set of balls before this comes <laughs> over because you're gonna need them. And he's like, "That's that's weird." Uh, I mean, I, I hear the words, but it's weird seeing them from somebody with hair. Like, you know, like I'm like, uh, it is. Let's see. You know, John McLean's daughter is gonna be a fucking nut job as well. She's gonna be a badass too, guaranteed. Because oh, for anybody who doesn't know, John McC- uh, Bruce Willis slash John McLean had finally he lost the battle with uh, with hair loss, so he's got no hair in this one. Just in case you wondered why. Hair, There's nothing wrong with that. People with no hair, uh, Not they at are counted as uh, incredibly sexy and very witty and very handsome. I didn't read the so room I, there, did I? <laughs> uh, I know, yeah. I was uh, just sitting there with the. I went out on Friday. I went out on Friday night, and everybody kept calling me Jason Statham because I had obviously because I've grown my beard out a bit time yeah. now, and I had this like kind of trench coat on. They went, "Oh, Jason Statham." They're obviously being sarcastic and taking a massive piss because I have no. I don't look at all like him, the handsome bastard that Jason Statham is. I don't know. I've seen some of your Instagram posts with the filter. You heavily filter them, so you know. The, well, the hashtag sexy, no filter. The sexy hashtag, bastard ones. <laughs> hashtag sexy bastard. No the filters. Do we talk? Shut. The, there's no filters in my pictures. Don't know what you're talking about. Never put filters on mine. Doesn't need they're it. All, they're always <clears> on a. They're always on a vehicle. They're always on a train or something like that. He's always going somewhere. Always looks. It's because. <laughs> just because just, I'm bored. I'm just like I'm yeah. gonna take a picture of myself right now, and then. Obviously, not filter the shit out of them and not do any sort of amendments to them <laughs> at all. And um, yeah, so then the, probably the next picture I'm going to put a wig on myself is <laughs> going <laughs> hashtag no filter. Oh man, yeah. Well, you should do that. I don't know if it's still around that turn yourself into a woman one. Did you do that? One? I did. Yeah, I did yeah. that one. You uh, commented yeah. on it on Twitter because yeah, <laughs> yeah. you can see the you see my chest here hanging at the top of my shirt. <laughs> it was like yeah, it was like a 
It was like Mrs. Doubtfire as a horror film. It was, it was... I know. I've commented, I goes, I'd do me. I thought I looked quite hot as a woman, to be honest. And you just caught me going, oh, yeah, apart from the chest here hanging at the shirt, right? I was like, oh, yeah, sorry. Hey, you, hey, if you... Take salsa out to Ryan. Take salsa. Hey, nothing wrong with that, mate. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. So, oh, God, well, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's kind of do a U-turn from that subject. Yeah. Um, what was it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um... Oh, yeah, and also, I remember when the film first came out, a lot of people complained that, like, John McClane was a bit of a, like, a Terminator. Well, he always is a Terminator, though, isn't he? That's, that's the whole premise of his, uh, his, um, his character more than anything else, isn't it? It's about him being, like, nails and not being able to die. Yeah. Well, so... he gets shot in this one as well. He gets shot twice. Yeah. Like, well, he, he gets shot quite a lot of times, though. Well, in the first one, he messed his feet up royally, and he got a massive beating by a big 16-foot German guy. The second one, he got his ass kicked in the side of a plane. Ooh, the yeah. third one, he just got his ass kicked all the way through the fucking film. Well, it's hung over a bit, that's why. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. And I tell you what, if I had to do that yesterday when I was hanging out my ass, and I had to go and, like, kind of go on a mass, nah, nah, I couldn't do it. I'd be like, nope, nope, going home. I need to sleep this off. <laughs> so, uh, Ryan, we need you to save the city. Don't care. I don't get. I, I'm hanging. I, I need some McDonald's and I need my, I need a duvet and some shit TV. That's all yeah. I need. Unless Simon says says unless Simon says I need some paracetamol and a drink of water, yeah. I'm not interested. Yeah, Simon can go and suck a dick. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> um, oh, I was on my way to Saint Ives. All that stuff. Oh, I like that film. But yeah, the the fighter playing bit was a bit over. That people said that was over the top, but I, I don't think so. I think it it was. Oh, it's the Harrier, one of the Harrier jump jet, bless him. God rest F, their souls. F sixteen, F fifteen, or something. I think. Or is it the F sixty? Well, well yeah. it's the Harriers, isn't it? They're, they're the ones that hover. The British ones, I don't know. This is yeah. this is showing off my old raft days now. Um, the Harriers, but they were awesome. But yeah, yeah, they were. The thing is, they are so hard to actually like fly, sort of thing, because you've got two. Because normally in one. Uh, um, uh, on one fighter jet, you've only got what kind of one main like, kind of joystick gear mm-hmm. stick, but in the Harrier, you've got two. Yeah, one controls obviously the steering, the other controls the actual like kind of zzz, the thrusters that go up and down. Yeah, yeah, I saw a Harrier yeah. jump jet at the uh, Imperial War Museum North and got one on the roof. It's pretty good, isn't it? Some yeah. ran- this is just some random geeky plate it noise is, yeah, for you right now. Yeah, uh... Oh, I text, I was over there, and then just to bring it back to films, I was over there seeing. Mrs. Doubtfire the musical. It was brilliant. Absolutely. They've got a musical of Mrs. Doubtfire. I swear it's real. I said, I put this Shut on. Shut up. I swear to God. Hang on a minute. I'll show, hang on, I'll show you. <laughs> He's going to show me on this. Fucking, um, they do a musical of everything now. They've got an Adams Family musical. Uh, obviously, I was going to say Greece. But when I was in London the other day there, well, yes, on Friday night, I was seeing posters for every random fucking show doing musicals. And I was like, what the hell? What, what is next? Have they done a? This is what they need to do, guys. Guys, if you're listening to this, we need to do a petition to do a Baywatch musical. I want to see a Baywatch musical with David Hasselhoff, Baywatch original musical. Baywatch cast with the Baywatch cast. Get involved with them. You know, you already know that David Hasselhoff can sing. He's a gangster. Get involved. But no, they have to go down the route of everything else. They do. I can't find the program, but I got some like badges. So. <laughs> what is it, uh, Mrs. Doubtfire? Who plays Mrs. Doubtfire? Is anyone famous? No, it's like an American guy. And I was actually worried because this is Robin Williams, isn't it? And I was worried that he was going to be like, I oh, hope he's good. But actually, he was, he was absolutely fantastic. And there's like musical numbers, and it really fits. It was, yeah. I mean, they do they do more about. It does make you think though that like he's a bit of a dick in the film, really. Of course he's a dick. He, especially he's the, a no, massive the, dick. No, especially at the beginning, like, you know, with the whole, like, with how he is with his wife and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't He doesn't do the, he didn't step up, does he? No, not at all. Two seconds, man. I'm going to have to get a drink of water because someone's caught me throat here. Go on, Oh, uh, Sorry, what were we up to? What were we up to? <laughs> I've clearly not the film, but. Yeah, <laughs> clearly, <Scott> clearly <laughs> not the film. Obviously not. That, that's crazy talk. Yeah, uh, yeah, Mr. Stafford the musical, it was great, but so many people were commenting on that. Like, th- that's not real. I was like, it is, I've just seen it. Like, I, I put pictures of it, the theatre, and people were like, no, I was like, yeah. That's not it real. Broadway, yeah. It's like, Sean, you've taken this sad series too far. <laughs> <laughs> this is a step too far, yeah. People were not happy. Oops, it's true. I do like Mrs. Doubtfire as a film, but it's not, it's, 
I do love Robin Williams, but I think it's it misses out for I can be a bit overrated sometimes though. Ooh, do you think? I think so, yeah. I think mm. so. I mean I suppose it depends what you're going for, doesn't it really? That's my uh, that's my um can I would you call it the um unpopular opinion you know oh do you know what, no i've got i know what you mean because my unpopular opinion i don't know what you think of this i think elf is massively overrated i just don't see it i agree i agree <laughs> I, <laughs> I agree with that one yeah, i'll see? join in on that because i think elf is yes will ferrell is great and all that sort of stuff but never... it is not as good as everyone says it is no i mean it's not like you know it's not it's not home alone it's not home alone too like it's you know oh. God, God, that's just put a damn classic, isn't it? Classic. That's a classic. Let's just put it in perspective. You know, I'll, I'll, I even, I'd even rate the Grinch higher than it, but I know that's that I'll probably lose a few people. Have I, you seen that they're bringing out a horror, horror Grinch? Yes. Well, I'm looking forward to, to that. And the, there's the Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey, isn't there? You got that um, one. You got the Santa one as well. Oh, is there a Santa? Oh, it's good. There's a you know the guy who is Stranger Things. All right, which one? Uh, uh, the main, the main guy. Yeah, the the copper. D- and David he's Harbour. a Hellboy. Dead. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. He's Santa, and he basically walks in. The premise of the, the 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 trailers out now. The premise of the film is he there's a ki- there's a family being kidnapped, and he decides to in Christmas Eve, and he rocks up and then kicks a fuck everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and that's basically what it is. And he's a bit of a gangster because he's like whatever. But I think that's a little bit of a rip off the Mel Gibson version of it. I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, vaguely. You know, see the 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 Mel, uh, Mel Gibson. He does. He's basically Santa Claus, and it's like he's real. And someone, some rich kid, hires a hitman to go and kill Santa. Oh no, I have to give that a go. It's such a good film, but honestly, it is brutal as well. You're like, oh, this is fucking brilliant. And that Santa is good. Santa is a gangster in it. <laughs> he is a yeah, massive I, gangster. But I'm there for those kind of weird because I just I just want something different. That's that's mainly my argument against superhero films. I think there's too many of them. Far too many of them. Like. To the detriment yeah. of everything else. Um, but people know that. I don't want to hear it every time they come on. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, John McClane. I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He shoots the guy. In my version, you hear him say, you became a motherfucker, and then he shoots him. Um, you hear the whole thing. Whereas in the rain that everyone saw, it was like muffled by the gunshot, which I remember annoyed a lot of people at the time. That's, uh, yeah. But it was quite a cool bit to do when he puts a gun to his chest sort of thing and shoves it through his, uh, he, well, the hole in his chest. I thought that was, yeah. a a, that was a bit of a badass move, to be quite honest. Yeah, when well, you like shoot that, yourself to kill the villain, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, go on, hold on. That's going to that's gonna cause a mark. That's going to leave a mark, isn't it? That's going to sting in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to sting in the morning. <laughs> well, that's, oh, that's going to look shit when I, the, the next time I fucking, like, can I go crazy on it? But yeah, well, that, it's not nice. That's the shoulder he's shot in. in. The first I had is right shoulder. He's shot in the, in the back, so that shoulder's taking a pummeling. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's because you know he goes to the the fire exit door, doesn't he? And he gets shot in the back through here, I think, on his right Ooh. side. He gets spats up. So if he's been hit there once, he's been hit like twice, three times in that shoulder. That oh, shoulder. He, he's not throwing. He's not catching baseballs with Jack McLean, is he? He's not throwing baseballs. He's got it. Has gone downhill right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, e God. Yeah, good film. Classic Die Hard ending. I enjoyed it. The only Die Hard film not to um, have anything to do with Christmas either. Oh, is that right? Yeah, uh, until the next one. But until yeah. the next one, yeah. All wow. the others like talked about Christmas or been around Christmas. Not the first. Of course, film, it is. Yeah, that one's basically made like uh, yeah, that's like kind of during the summer, really, mostly, isn't it? Yeah, it was like a summer film instead, wasn't it? Which, yeah, I think it was quite good. Yeah, it was quite. Good. I, I liked it. I, th- I thought it was a good film, to be honest. Can't yeah. lie to you. Uh, it was one. It was one of my favorite. Not one of my favorites, but it was. Uh, it was a good. It was a good. Yeah, I, I rated it. Well, I don't know. I, I have the first four on about an equal footing. Although I, I do think if I had to gun to my head <laughs> or shoulder, I do think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do think if I had to pick one to to watch, Die Hard Two. As I don't know why, I really enjoy that one. And it's not the guy. It's not. The, it's not the villain oil, oiled at the beginning doing his karate. <laughs> I was supposed to see. Is that <laughs> yeah, the reason yeah. why? The fire jump. Yeah, um, that's that. I do enjoy that one. I don't know. I don't know what it is. So, um, my fate. It has to be with a vengeance, man. I do. Yeah. I do like. I do. I do like the die hard with the vengeance, but I can't lie to you. I, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, it is good. I love the whole. I think the villain in that's great. Yeah, um, I think that's the reason. The, the, the thing is, the the thing is, is because you got you got Sam L, the old Sam Sam J, and you've got the villain as well, and I think that really comes together great, yeah. and uh, that's probably the reason why I, I probably like it. But you can't go wrong with the first original, though, can you? 
Well, oh, Nakatomi Tower um, and all that sort of stuff. You can, but I actually see. I'm a bit. Str- I, I I kind of prefer the second one over the first one. I know that's sacrilegious, but wow. uh, yeah, oh my God. it's just. But I, but I'm the I'm like this with Jurassic Park. I prefer the Lost World over the first one. So I know how Ryan's eyes have just shot up his head. See, the, what the hell? Seriously, yeah, the yeah, Lost World yeah. sucked balls. Oh, I love it, me. Oh, I know. Oh, I mean, yeah. It's great. Let's get a T-Rex and put it in fucking like, the middle of a city. Come San on. San Diego. San Diego. Do you know San Diego is actually uh, Latin for whale's vagina? <laughs> great. That's lovely to know. <laughs> if you don't see, that's an Anchorman reference. It, How dare not, you, Sean? Mm-hmm. You've not seen Anchor Man. I, I tell you what, I, me, I you're have, no, I have, right I have. I just, I, I, oh, how did I fall asleep halfway through? I fell asleep halfway through. I think I've ever watched it since. It's the greatest film of all time. Uh, is it okay? I know, coming from a massive, like, <laughs> I am on literally a film critic podcast, and I'm saying Anchor Man's the greatest film of all time. And Sean is looking <laughs> at me, going, "You're never coming on here again. Your opinion is invalid about anything." It's, right been, now. it's turned a little bit now. The, the wine's kicked in, and all I'm getting is your opinion, shit. It's all I'm getting now. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair though, I was looking. I was looking back at our show notes from our last episode. You came on and I basically, it's like I can't, I can't, You came on and I basically called you shit in the first couple of minutes. So I suppose it's just revenge, really. It's getting back to it, mate, isn't it? I know. Prob- problem is, some probably some Americans or Canadians will listen to this and be like, "Wow, those guys really didn't like each other." <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> all, the, all the British people will be going, "Yeah, these guys are really getting on." Like. <laughs> It's like when you were talking about before, yeah, Ryan really kind of, he was like the first one that really told me to collaborate with people and you come on, you're a prick, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, can't, you can't get too, it works over the other side of the Atlantic. It doesn't work for over here. I know, can be nice it. for a couple of minutes. It's like, oh, right, this is the, you know, it's like if you met your mates, it doesn't take long. Oh, this is Ryan, this is so-and-so. Yeah, oh, really good mate. Complete uh, wanker like, but he's yeah. nice mate. That's what it's like. <laughs> what a prick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be cold worse, mate, don't worry. Yeah, I've no doubt. Um, <laughs> I uh, yeah, <laughs> no, it's uh, it's all good fun. This this I don't even know this. I don't know how the hell I'm going to write the show notes for this one. They'll be good. They'll be intriguing ones. I'll tell you that. Just say we tried to write it, but we tried to um talk about the um, the film, but, but then it just went downhill. <laughs> it just went yeah. downhill from the after the first five minutes. We yeah. don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. We passed Alice. We passed Alice. We passed that Alice. Was we high fived the Mad Hatter <laughs> on the way past. Oh, oh yes, yeah, honestly, I just I like the ending as well. Just to see you at the hospital. See you later. Um, I love the That's fact it. he says that to the ambulance driver as well. That's the last line in the film. John McLean's like ambul- John McLean's like hospital. And the guy shuts oh, the door. That's it. Oh, hospital. Yeah. They, well, they know who I am. <laughs> They're like, John, what you been up to? <laughs> Not again. Yeah. Same show that, yeah. Yeah, Twice, yeah. yeah. Same show, yeah, yeah. What'd you do? Did you say the line at the end? Of course I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had, I had to. to. That's what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> oh, cool. That's good. Good to know, man. Oh. Good to know. And how many times do people get shot in the foot in this film? And there's some good, de- <laughs> there's some good deaths as well. And like, we haven't even spoken, I know, well, we spoke about everything else. But <laughs> the um, the bit where the guy's in, in the computer chair and he just throws him down the stairs. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Apparently, the stuntman landed so heavily he dented the metal stairs. I'm like, whoa, like, that's, whoa, that's yeah, fuck, that's hard. Yeah. That is hard. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love that bit. And uh, obviously, the, the the guy who's like a hamster, because that that bit at the beginning, like the assault on the apartment. Oh, that's another bit in the unrated version. I've got you know when at the beginning where the, the guy with the machine goes firing through the door, and John McClane puts his foot yeah. on it. In the unrated version, I've got it. Grabs his head, pulls it through, and he like full on swings on the guy's neck, and the guy's head's like, <laughs> and he lets him go. And his head's like, <laughs> oh, it's... if if you weren't going to buy the unrated before, you will now. <laughs> no, it's oh, it's definitely class. going to buy it now. And I'm going to get it. He's, now. he's like, he's it. like, and he's like, fuck you, and he like snaps his neck, and he's like, yeah, this this is a diehard film. This is pretty good. It's um, definitely a diehard film. Yeah, uh, it's, it, I just I, pro- I just I enjoy. It. I just think it's. A clever film, like it's one of those films that I think is like, like chronically underrated. You know, when you watch it and think, "What?" I think the expectations were probably too much. No one of those films where everyone kind of the and I kind of think that this is a hard sell, but I kind of think this is the same with like you know you like Terminator Three or Terminator Salvation. The expectations mm. that high, no one cares after those, but the expectations so high that that it's never it comes out and everyone goes it's shit. And yeah, then you go, well, yeah. f- and then you watch it like 20 years later or whatever, and you go, actually, 
to be fair, or in the case of Die Hard, you watch you watch a good day of Die Hard and you go, Jesus Christ, we didn't know how good we, we had it. Um, yeah. What do you, what do you think? Because you, you obviously watched the unrated version and obviously you've watched the, the rated version. Yeah. Do you think, is there a massive difference in it? Is it? Does it make it a lot enjoyable? Does it make it a lot better? What's the difference between? Uh, just, well, more swearing and it's a bit bloodier. And yeah. the characters are, are like, some of the characters get like sharper lines because they're like, especially Cliff Curtis's character who plays like, the NSA guy, he's a lot more, because in the unrated, in the rated version you'd have seen, the normal version, he comes across as like, they basically say to him, oh, we've kept this secret for you. And he's like, you two geniuses, which is That's in my, it, yeah. ra- keep out of my way. But in the middle of that, when they say it's a bunch of pagan, he's like, I'm the, I'm, you know, he's like, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the head of the infrastructure, you are a prick. And then he's like, <laughs> stay out of my way. He says to him, like, stay out of my way. And there's a few bits yeah. where it is. And like, just a few bits where things are a bit longer. So fights are a bit longer or like this, there's a bit more, like some of the times there's a bit of swearing, but. Um, and it lo- does look like it's been spliced in, but it, it, of course it has. Yeah. Um, but not in an off putting way. Um, it's just, the only reason why I ask is just because obviously to to keep that 12A rating, you know, did they do a lot of difference to it, you know, because a lot of, you can see a lot of films and they do get a, they have to cut a hell of a lot to get a certain like kind of age yeah. rating and all that sort of stuff. And it sometimes it harms the film and it harms the essence of what the film's all about, you know? There's, there's just more, it's like, there's just more blood. It's like the bit with, a bit with the guy. I'm sure the guy when he gets thrown down the stairs. I'm sure his face is a hell of a lot more messed up in the rating I've seen. And like the guy, <laughs> the guy gets his neck snapped, and then there's the there's just more blood. Like the part where they kill all the computer guys. Is the computer yeah. Man, there's women there as well. But when they kill all those in the in the unri- in the normal version, the guys like stood there and the, the gun swings around and he's like no, and it's like bang and it got it cuts. In the version I've got, it shows you the reverse where the guy just like, it's the deck and the oh, blood's shit. like. Pfft. Although the, guy shoots him, although the guy shoots him in this side of the chest, not so I never quite got that, but it doesn't matter. Um, like it's like, are you going for his heart because you've missed? Uh, that's that's just a very severe punctured lung, and he'll bleed out for a while. But never mind. Um, <laughs> but so that's pretty. That's pretty dark. Um, and I think I'd, I mean it doesn't hurt it. I mean it's just kind of a bit more swearing, and if it's more the extra lines that make it quite funny. Like yeah. the whole when he calls him Jenny Craig or when the mum's like, Freddy, you got company. And he doesn't answer. And he's, she's like, Freddy, get the fuck up here. And all, and like, <laughs> it's just a few bits out of that way. It's just, it's quite entertaining. Um, it, It's worth watching. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not like a, it's not like a massively extended version or anything like that. Um, speaking of which, I'm about to do Terminate Salvation. And I, I bought the Blu-ray for like 25p from a charity shop. Bingo. Um, and that's uh, 25 pence seriously yeah <laughs> about that, yeah um so shows you how good that film is yeah but that's a director's cut i didn't even know they did one it's the same Ooh. as like a da vinci code they did a, they did a director's cut of that an extended cut on the blu-ray oh really i didn't even, I didn't even know that existed yeah that's much better you know oh i might watch that then it gives um it gives the cop and um it gives uh bezu fash it gives oh well, might as well. It gives him, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it gives um you know uh, Alfred Molina's character like the priest guy. It yeah, yeah. gives him more of a background and it fills it back in. And it also ah. like at the beginning when at the beginning where because I never understood this about the film. I've I've got like an illustrated version of the book, but in the film it doesn't explain to you. It doesn't explain to you why. Um, he's on stage giving a lecture and they show this guy getting killed and yet they think he's done it. Like, hang on a minute. But what they say in the in the <laughs> film is that he like when the guy was killed, he was in his hotel room and they had the do not disturb on. So the police think he could have got out killed and come back around. Ah, uh, it's um, got a lot of plot holes involved, yeah. Yeah. And the bit where the guy um is running the uh, Silas, the, the like kind of albino assassin, uh, it's like chasing him through the you know, through the art gallery and you're thinking, surely there's cameras in there, right? Yeah, you think so, yeah. But there's an uncut in the uncut uh, the director's cut. The bit where they're walking to see the body, uh, Langdon and Fash, um, Langdon looks at the cameras and says, "I take it none of these are real." And he's like, "How do you know? How do you know that?" And he's like, "Well, I, I've I've worked, talked to a lot of museums and I know enough about them that it's about containment. So they would keep somebody in if they're broken. It's not about ah, video. it's not about yeah, it's but, not about knowing yeah. who they are. It's about keeping the like, lock, locking the guy in because that's where the right, keys yeah. and all that sort of stuff come yeah, down, yeah. don't they?" So oh, that's it, interesting. It, it explains a lot more, like the Silas. Oh, there's a, there's a whole, there's a, 
there's a brilliant scene where it explains why Silas's character like is as he is. Like you know, you see him get put in jail, and then he saves the priest at the altar. Um, thanks for listening to this review of uh, of Die Hard, everybody. And uh, there's the, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 there's that bit. You know, you're, you're an angel there. Um, there's a bit that they, they cut out because it's quite a long sequence, but it's where he there's an earthquake wherever he's kept in Italy or wherever it is. Yeah. Um, and like there's loads, like part, half this little village is breaking down, the wall, the jail falls down, and he gets out, and that's when he gets to the priest and whatever. And it fills a lot of his story, and, it, and it's longer, but it, it yeah, 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 it's better for it okay. because it it, fit, it fills in all these different characters about because in the films they're a bit like, well, why are they doing this and why are they doing that? Um, it's 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 a decent cut. It 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 improves it. Like I said, if you think the Da Vinci Code in its normal cut was boring and too long, then the, <laughs> the extended cut's not for you. But if you enjoyed <laughs> it and you want a bit more about it, then it's because I don't have many Blu-rays. I've got like I don't know why I've got Terminator Genesis on Blu-ray. I couldn't tell you. I think it was cheap. I've got um, like Da Vinci Code. And now I've got uh, Terminator Salvation. Like because they release these different cuts on Blu-ray that they don't give you on DVD, which I don't really like. It's metal. Um, but yeah, so that that's well worth checking out. So yeah. there we yeah. go. There we go, guys. Is that is an added bonus for you right at the end? <laughs> Absolutely. I, <laughs> I remember I, I used to cut out the tangents and make up extra episodes out of them, but now I just embrace the uh, embrace the madness, really. Just because if you did that, the episode this episode would only be like ten minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> that scene was good. That seems good. Finished. Yeah, finished. Um, that was it. <laughs> oh God, but no. Cheers to Colonel Ryan. I, I uh I hey, it's been a pleasure, mate. I love coming on this show, mate. You know I do. This is the fourth time, and hopefully many more if you want me on. I know. We need to decide what else we're... Sk- what, I mean, because I don't... Ah, oh, the fifth one I can't do. It's just terrible. We can't do the fifth. We can't do the fifth, no. mate. I'm, do, I'm saving that. I'm, I'm going to do that with Bill, because we do bad films. So I'll do it with that. Oh, but it's not It's not a diehard film for me. It's not a diehard film for me. It's you know what? I've never even seen it. I didn't even want to see it. To be no, so. I wouldn't inflict... If you've not seen it, I'm not making you watch it for this. Oh, no, no, because, no, because people said this to me, and I thought, how bad could it be? And then you watch it and go, oh, Jesus, it's so generically bad. It's it's yeah. unreal. I said that and to like, my mate as well. I said that because how bad could it be? He went, please don't. No, I would no, no. He honestly, said exactly the same. I'm being honest. Like, this isn't even a joke. Um, you know when people say to you, oh, no, really, don't waste your time on this. Because I, 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 cause some <laughs> people are like, some people, a lot of people are like, well, how, how can you say that? How can you say that if you, you've never watched? That's not fair. I'm like, well, I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah, exactly. Sometimes it's worth going. You know what? I respect you too much to put you through that crap. It's <laughs> oh, no, honestly, Ryan. I like you too awful. much. It's awful. It's awful. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong. If you've ever had a few beers and you just throw it on one night, and that, that's on you. That's yeah. you know, we all make tough choices under alcohol, but it's no, it's not even. It's not even so bad. It's good. It's just insultingly bad. Oh, when you're watching it, just like, and it's just stupid. And do you know how everything they do right in this film, like, there's loads of practical effects, and it's really grounded, and the characters are really good. In the next film, it's just like bombastic. There's like one good car crash sequence at the beginning, and then yeah. all the rest of it's just CGI mess. It's oh, just a no. mess. Oh, like no. John McClane and his son fall about fucking seven stories out of a window, smash through a skylight. Smash through another light, land in a pool or something, and you're like, you, you'd have a broken neck. You'd be spliced. You'd be you, your arteries would be cut to pieces. <laughs> yeah, you'd and be all kinds of fucked up. And it's just all stupid sound bites, like that they clearly just wrote in for the trailer. Oh, like, uh, that's a shame. like John, Mc, like John McLean's son turns to him and he's like, "We're not a hugging family." And John McLean's like, "Damn right, it's, it's pathetic." It, that's <laughs> that's a ge- genuine quote from the film. So if that doesn't give you an idea of the level. I don't know what does. It's like the drive across lazy writing. They drive oh they drive across half of Russia in about oh no sorry tell a lie they don't tell a lie they drive across half of Ukraine in about oh, they drive across half of Ukraine in about like three hours and when you look at it on a map it's like that's going to take you like it's six hours. at least yeah and it sets it up to be like the beginning bit because I watched this read I don't know why I think it was for a review that never happened stupid me. Um, <laughs> I watched it recently, <laughs> and the beginning set. You know, one of those films that sets up, and you meet this unknown villain in a jail, and you know he's the villain because he's a bit shady, um, and he's like playing chess with himself and like psyching out the prisoner. And you think, oh, this might actually be quite dark and interesting. No, it's just <laughs> no. They just the, the the best part was the first five minutes. That was it. Yeah, Game yeah, over yeah. From that. There's like one sequence in it where there's a big car crash, and it's really cool. And after that, 
it's it's but they reuse a line out of this they re they cut out a line you know the bit where he goes uh in where he's driving the big truck or he didn't talk, the big truck and the f-15 or 16 whatever he's shooting at oh him yeah yeah is that it? Is that your best shot? They cut out, is that your best shot? And put it in this new chase. And it's so obvious. It's like, what are you doing? Do you know when you watch it and you're like... What, is that a, a cut and paste job, was it? Yeah. You're like, a fan oh, film no. would have been better than it. Oh, it's shot. Honestly, I can't, I'm gonna, that, I'm, I can't wait to watch it back to do it with Bill because it's so bad. But <laughs> it's not even so bad. It's good. It's just painful. God, um, Jay Courtney ruins anything that he's in. Oh, don't, man, honestly. Yeah, I, I, I'm yet to see him in a film where I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, you can act. I'd like to see him in a no. film that's actually decent, you know what I mean? I do, yeah, I don't think he uh, he needs a better agent, I think. He does. Uh, it's, like, it's like Jamie Dornan, right? I didn't think he could act until I saw him, or my dad saw him in, was it The Killing with the, uh, uh, what's her face? Out of X-Files, um, the woman. Uh, right, Gillian Anderson. Yeah, he did a series, was it called The Killing? Where he played like a psychopath and she was like the cop. My dad's I think you're right. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. My okay, dad said that was brilliant. That. And then I saw him in Anthropoid, which was about like the Czech resistance in the Second World War and stuff. And that was oh. brilliant. That was with Killian Murphy. That's worth a watch. Uh, oh, Anthrop- Sally Murphy's Anthropoid. awesome. I love him. Yeah, Anthropoid. That's worth a watch. I was like, and I watched that. Okay. I was like, oh my god, Jamie Dornan, you can actually act. Like, no offense, but like you, you know, you, you see Fifty Shades of Grey on the first one, and you're like, oh, you can't act, but he actually can. So fair play, one. <laughs> um, what, this episode's just got absolutely every which way but loose, hasn't it, sir? Every way. This is the way we like it. Yeah, he's, he, technically, this is like your yearly celebration, so embrace it, mate. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, you've got to, haven't you? Um, yeah, what's going to come the next year? Who knows? About five. Hey, what million. do you think? What, hey, what's going to happen the next year? Let's get down. What, what are you going to do for next year? Um, I th- do you know what? Because a lot. Of... <laughs> Stop taking advice. <laughs> no, I'm, I'll, I'll, be, I'll explain why I mean that. Because I, I took advice off people. And a lot of the time, you gave me good advice, but I took advice of other people who have been doing it a long time. It doesn't pan out. I think some people think, not that I did it, because I, I never look at people's... I don't look at how long they've been going or how many followers they've got, because followers followers do not equal listens for one. No, um, definitely not. And, and, you know, people... Other people said to me, oh, why well, don't you, like, go for these bigger podcasts, like this one and that one, and try and get some of their audience? It doesn't... I, it's funny because the, the bigger the podcast that I've collaborated with, the less I've got back in terms of view. So, I, not that I've tried to do it, but it's just, just I've talked to that many people. It's um, the, way, the way that I, I was the same, right? I was just, a lot of people said that to me, said, why don't you go and use these people's influence? And that's an old school way of thinking. That's what, you, you know, it's, especially with me, I always used to, I always get these, like, kind of, uh, on my show, like, kind of, um, health coaches and life coaches and all that sort of stuff because they want to use my audience to fund them yeah. that's what it is you're not using it they're they're basically taking advantage of you and that's not the best way to go about things because yeah. the people who listen to like that show or that person like that person they don't like yeah, they might, a couple you might you might be lucky and get a few come over fair play fantastic but you're not going to get any sustainable growth the people no, who no. want to listen to you you will find them and they'll find you yeah, yeah. I mean, and I do, I do say it a few times. It's a kind of joke that I get an average of 15, 16 of listeners. But if if those are people who come to listen and actually enjoy, then I'll I'll take that rather than hundreds. Right, let's do. Let, I tell you what. Here's here's a one for you. You, you sit there and tell you that. How about what you say? You get fifteen, what fifteen listeners an episode. Well, that's well. Anchor does this thing where it tells you your average listens. But my highest episode was Spider Man, and I don't know. This happened on a few people's, but. I put that out the day that it was reviewed in America. It came out in America. And that yeah. got 100, 130 views in like two days. And I thought, I've made it. And then right. it crashed back <laughs> down to earth. Um, but it's funny though, because my like my top, of my top like 10 episodes, a lot of the ones towards the top are solo ones. So my second uh, all like highest one, uh, highest episode is Titanic, uh, the review I did, which is, which is essentially an hour of 40 minutes of me talking about the film, but also with facts. Cause it's like, it's like my mastermind subject, I think and yeah. that was 51. Then below that is like a Titanic documentary I did with a historian from over in the States. Uh, that's 41. And then below that, uh, one, two, three, three out of the top, are kind of, uh, with bill ones with my mate, a couple of them, um, two of them are with a few different people. And then, the Captain Marvel ones, the solo, that's about number 10. So that you're basically, came out of nowhere. 
So you're basically getting like we're enough like what twenty to fifty. Let's put it in our kind of perspective. This is what no, people no, don't no, no, no. I, I don't, I don't. Well, no, I, I don't get. So I, I would, so I would get. Uh, in the in the perspective. So as we sit now, my recent episode twelve. So that's only been out two days. The one before that ten. It's only been out four days. But the other one ten. The one before that six. That might have been so, yeah. a bit out there. So, so, 13, so, 15, 16, 13, 20, yes. 16. So, around on average. Right, so, we we'll go for it for a round it up. This is what the, the point I'm trying to make it. The point I'm trying to make here. You're sitting there at 20. You're sitting there around about 20 per episode. Can you? Would you imagine sitting in a room in front of 20 people three times a week, four times a week? That's what you have to really kind of sit and wonder yeah, that. That's, that's point, yeah. a different perspective of it. You're like, that's quite a lot. You know, that's 20 people coming to yeah. see you and wonder what you've got to say. And every, people don't understand. Numbers don't mean fuck all. It's yeah. about what you're doing. That 20 people could be 20 different people or it could be the yeah. same people, even fantastic. And that is what you need to think. You're sitting there in front of 20, 30, 40 people, whatever it is, three times a week. So that's two, four, six. Yeah. That's 60 people a week. Are coming to sit down. Imagine them in a, a, a in a hall somewhere or in a, a, it's a pub. Mad, isn't it? That is, I, I, when you think it that way, you're like, yeah. oh shit, that's a lot. Yeah. Do you know what I? Do you know what I? I quite like looking at instead of the views in terms of I quite like looking at where the people are listening because for a long time mine was like US and the UK par and par. Now the US is where I mean the US is forty eight percent of my audience. The UK yeah. is only thirty seven percent. Uh, Canada has come out of nowhere to 5%, Germany 2%, Australia 1%, India 1%, Ireland yeah. 1%, Puerto Rico below a percent, Spain, Egypt, Sweden, Japan, all the way down to countries such as Paraguay, Kazakhstan, Turkey, Peru. Someone Love in Peru it. has listened. I mean, that, that's what that's I like. That's amazing. That is amazing. It's absolutely because I, I, I've, sp- I, so I think it's just, I, I do enjoy them, but I think for the, I just, I, I think for the next year, so in terms of like not listening, like trying to just do it my own way in terms of, because a lot of people were like, I think a, a few people said this to me that podcasters, because that's mainly your feedback. I've not really had audience feedback because you don't really get it apart from the odd Google uh, review, which is pretty nice, or Apple review, which is nice. But even then, the, most of them are podcasters. A lot yeah. of people say, no, I think you probably released too many and you da- like you water and your views down. So I dropped from two episodes a week to one. Yeah. And I did this twice, and my views dropped off a cliff. And not in terms of just half of them, because you'd understand it would drop half if you're releasing t- less. You know, you really go from two to one, you're going to see a drop. But it dropped through the floor. So I was like, well, I'm not going to do that again. And uh, like, talk, I tried to go to like release on a Wednesday and a Saturday. And, I, and then in the end, I just thought, I'll just, because I don't like having, I know this sounds a bit weird, I don't like having a, a bank of episodes. I don't mind having a lot saved up. But I don't like having like two months. I don't want to stop for two months. I love doing it. I like talking a bit. I don't want to go. Well, I can stop in October. I can. Oh, what be now October? I can stop now, and I've got episodes to take me to. Because if I stop now, I've got episodes to to probably take me to back in November, December. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Why would I want to sit on those episodes? Why? I like the to content. Get them out. Isn't it? It's good content. Yeah. Isn't it? I want to get. I want to like get them out and get them gone and done, so that I can go right. What else have I got next? Um, the next year, I don't know, try and dredge through the Marvel. Whether or not I get there, I don't know. Um, <laughs> try and dredge through the Marvel stuff. Um, and just, I've got this nice little, well, it's not a little, it, it does grow, but I've got this, this nice little group of people I do podcasts with. Yourself, Bill, uh, from Bill Reese Bad Views, Ben from Film Floggers. Um, I've got just people, you know, I've got Luke from Red Star, who I did a Bake Off series with. Sarah from Weird Horizon, who's been away for a few months or so, but she's been moving and stuff. But she's back now. I do conspiracy kind of like Men in Black stuff and all that with her, which is love it. Interesting. Um, and the Josh from Talking Smack, we do. We did like a Quiet Place and stuff, and we've done a few films. There's there's more. I should I'm probably forgetting, but there's all like different people. I do Stu from Stu World Order and uh, the Pint Podcast. Like I went on one, and they gave me a list of their friends who necessarily don't even have podcasts to go do episodes with. So. You just gotta to talk to people and like, yeah, take advice off people, but also just to say like, what what route do I want to go in? I think I'll probably go more towards doing a, a mix of episodes, episodes like this where it's tangent galore, which I love. Episodes with Bill, which were a, a bit more short, a bit structured. 
the review it yourself one, which were, which I really enjoy because it's basically me sat there while somebody talks at me, telling about American football or, or like basketball or college sports, which is interesting because I don't have a clue. Um, there'll be more of those. The Defend It Yourself series again, because everyone loves a film that everyone hates. Like everyone knows, I rated Batman and Robin ten it's out of ten, true. which shocked a lot of people. Um, but for what it is, it's it's enjoyable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Brian's like, Brian. Just mouth a little bit when you said that. <laughs> a lot of people did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I think it'll be just more going into just doing kind of more of what I want. Whether it'll be like more historical stuff, more documentaries, or, or in, yeah, which take take a lot of doing because you you have to like read books and research and stuff. My, my you know when people say, "Oh, what's the not the favorite episode to do?" Because it's bloody hard and it wasn't exactly. In, it was enjoyable, but it wasn't like a laugh because it wouldn't be. But I did Blackfish uh, with John from um, Sense of Shelf, which is a great name, a uh, podcast. It is all about books and stuff. And I did that. And that episode, like I read about it. And because people have been killed, and you never know who's going to listen to these episodes. So I thought, right, I'm going to have to be careful because you, do, you don't know. But someone's family could listen to this. So yeah. Um, so I, that was probably the episode I'm probably proudest of just because I felt like I actually brought something to the table because I think mm. Blackfish is very, because it is, because it's, an act, it's very one viewed. Like it, it, it's telling you it's all bad. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. But when I didn't, when I read a lot of articles and read about the people in it and tried to balance it a little bit and say, well, actually, yeah, this, but actually, if you look at the background of it, this guy said they cut his story down. I was quite proud of that one. Um, so I suppose, it, I don't know, to do more of what I enjoy and, who I enjoy it, to do them with. And the joy of the Defend It Yourself is I can have anybody on. And if they want to come back, great. If they want to have me on there, it's great. But if we do one and they enjoy it, but they, they don't want to come back or whatever, because it happens, great. Fine. It happens, yeah, of I'm course not as wor- I'm not as bothered. Uh, well, I wasn't massively bothered before, but I don't know. I just I enjoy doing it. And people say to me, like, oh, you do all sorts. And I'm like, yeah, because I want to. I don't do them because it's. I know I joke about throwing enough shit that it sticks. Um, which I think all podcast, <laughs> any podcaster who says they're not doing that is lying because we're all hoping, you know, one will take off. We all are. You know, you don't want to be on the side of the billboard, but only takes people. one, only takes one. That's yeah. the thing. But, you know, you do want, you know, a, um, and I'd like to think you, you can bring a bit of a unique perspective on something because um, otherwise, what, what are we kind of, what are we bothering for? Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. So, sorry, that was a if lot you, of family, wasn't it? But if you could change anything, over the past year, or, or were you going to go the next year? What would you do with your with your what, show? What in terms of before and in yeah, anything? If you could ch- if you could change anything from what you've previously been doing, what would you change now? What was the biggest thing um, you'd change? That's a good question. Um, I'm bringing I'm bringing my podcast into it. You know, <laughs> that's a good idea. Yeah. I'm literally this is amalgamating <laughs> to the walk the line now. This is this. See, yeah, guys, yeah. this is the sort of shit I do. You know, you get a little sample of this sort of shit I do. And the best thing about it is, is when you turn around and you say a question, and the best answer you get back is, "That's a good question." It I is. Love that. I'm just. I'm, I'm high. F- I'm. I'm basically sitting there, <laughs> reaching for the roof right now. I'm like, uh, uh, uh. uh I know. That's what I do. It's all right, guys. He's keeping his hands above the table. Um, <laughs> Cork is not in hand right now. Thumb is up, bum. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, well, what would I? Ch- um, what a change! I'd say, what, what would you do differently? Um, I'd. Uh, is it anything I'd? Um... Do you want me to get the countdown timer out? Yeah, my. Um, I used to have one of those. Um. Christ knows why. I think I think I think for for a long time I probably worry I tell you what, edit less. I don't edit massively, but I think I think a few of my episodes recently have been almost editless. Like to the yep. point of I've taken like thirty Basically seconds good. out of it or I've taken a, a pause out of it or I've taken a like this, oh I need to go for a wee or I need to get a drink. I've cut it, but I've got a lot less worried. Anal, about, anal about it, yeah, yeah. Like, can I... oh, if you, if if I, if I sent you a link to my podcast, I did with my friend. I'm almost unrecognizable in that. In that, I'm so square in it. I don't really? swear. I don't. He's Prim the one proper. Trying, he's the one trying to be funny, and I'm the one. Believe it or not, I know you won't believe it, but I'm the one going. No, and it's stay on track. Why are you talking about that? And his job was basically putting me off. 
So we're basically arguing. Like, well, you f-. And those were good fun to do. Um, I think it would just be worry less. Like, I know my whole joke is no politics. Because I can't be, I'm very political as a person, but not. Not on the bloody internet. I mean, you're not just asking for trouble. Um, well, I don't, I don't mean good, like that. But it's, it's good fun, though. It's just, yeah, not, I mean, not, nothing wrong with part of me. Not wrong with kind of bending the envelope. Yeah, well, part of me does think like if if the if the views stay this low, I might just have an episode where I say, you know what, this this is terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, I, I think you know what. Okay, the um, anarchist episode where it all went down. They'll much. probably make they'll probably make episodes of this. YouTube guys will make videos. Where did review the <laughs> review it yourself went downhill? Is episode seven hundred? Yeah, in, but it was in, next in, month. Yeah. <laughs> probably. Um, well, yeah. Uh, what did I do? I I think. Um, I, I I don't know. I, I, to be fair, I think I've been lucky in that I've met a group of people that 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 have done all right and would want to come back. Um, I'd probably, I think I've learned this, if I'm going to be brutally honest, because it's what your podcast is about, isn't it? Um, it is. Be, worry less about, like, answering everything online, like, uh, answering everything online. Uh, and you find out certain things, like, follow Fridays, like, that's, you know, great for some people. Oh, my God. I, I don't I do not do it because, and also, like, yeah, okay, I'll be honest. Like, you get added into these podcast groups about sharing this and sharing that but then there's only so many people who will share that stuff or will not so suppose it it depends a lot of these podcast po- uh, podcast groups they're all in it for themselves you know they want to know what they can get out of it you know that's the thing everyone everyone's the thing is i mean i'm shitted on everyone right now but the thing is <laughs> if you come over to it you see all these guys who are really ingenuine and they only look out for themselves you can, you, but the thing is is what you found you found a good bunch of people Great. that are completely different they're actually they want to help you they want to fucking do the business and i say love that community again well, yeah, that's what yeah. happens i mean you know i know i know um like ben from film club is like he is you know his podcast like, he did an episode where he basically was just whinging and he was just having a very sarcastic he's very very dry sense of humor funny enough for a southerner uh very dry sense of humor um <laughs> and he he was basically saying, "Have you seen the shit you can get on these, you know, on these, you know, uh, uh, Patreons?" He's got one himself now. He's got, but uh, you know, he said, "Oh, about this shit about tea towels and all this crap." And and he was basically saying, "Oh, I'm going to steal other people's segments." And it was all very tongue in cheek. But he, I think a few people took it seriously, and I was like, and I thought, bloody hell, there's always it's like a guy. A guy <laughs> this was a funny. One. I don't know if I told you. It's a guy. Did I tell you when a guy four starred an episode, and loads of people were like, "So, so." I put an episode out and I said I hadn't seen a film. Um, what? Oh, yeah, that was it. I put out, um, I did Clue of another one, Brenda from Horror Fan History. We're about to do John yeah. Carter soon. So she's another club. John, so you did John Carter? Yeah, oh, yeah, good, yeah, yeah. Good yeah. luck with that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. She quite likes it. So I'm going to listen to this. I'm going to listen to that an, one. Another collaborator, you know, and, uh, that's tomorrow, I think we review, we, tomorrow night, I think. Um, so another collaborator anyway. So, so many for, honestly, I was going to say, I'm doing four tomorrow, and I've got five booked for Wednesday. <laughs> no, I was going to say, Ryan. I was, uh, oh yeah, the way what podcast trio calls from London. They have no, they have no boundaries, and I love it. If you haven't listened to one of those episodes, then go and have a listen. About they're hilarious. They're the reason why Mister Blobby's in my podcast logo. But anyway, um, ah, okay, <laughs> a good story in there. Um, so yeah, it's what the fuck was I talking about? Um. I don't, I don't know. What was I talking about? What, what was I'm talking some. I don't know. You went off on one, didn't you? Absolutely, freaking flew off on one. You went off on one. I suppose, oh yeah, yeah. So yes, yeah, so that was it. So I did that with Clue. If you've seen it with Tim Curry, it's about. It's based on Cluedo, right? Cluedo. It's a film. Never seen it. Never seen it. Oh, it's brilliant. You know. Is um, it really? Yeah, really, Ooh, really clever. Like it's like a American film, dead dark, but like with British humour. It's, it's great. Ooh. So and it's about. Uh, Plus, Tim Curry's a bit of a gangster, isn't he? Yeah, it's great. Um. But I, I admitted I hadn't seen Rocky Horror Picture Show, which is true. I haven't seen it, right? Um, and then this guy commented and put, yeah, like four starred an episode saying I would have given it five. I think it was good pods. Isn't it? I would have given it five, but you haven't seen Rocky Horror Picture Show. And I, I comment, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he'd already messaged me, like, and we were trying to, we haven't organized it yet, trying to organize an episode because oh, cool. he's, quite, he's quite new. But then people were like, really? like Because I did, I share it and was like, ah, oh, blah, never mind. I'll have to watch it. And people were like, people, a few podcasters kind of jumped to my defense and were like, and messaged me like, oh, this isn't, 
this isn't like this isn't right. And I was like, what are you talking about? They're like, oh, we we don't do that in the podcast community. You always give people five stars. I was like, well, but well, this, it's an it's a joke. Better. I was like, it's a joke. Like, don't worry about it. It's oh, just dude. a joke. And the guy, the guy was like, I said to the guy, like, oh, don't worry about it. Like, it, it's just like it. But I thought, fucking hell, like what? Like it was just a bit weird. So I think, it, yeah, there's always going to be. I that always say, I, I always I say, this is, this is this is what I'm saying. Oh, we always give it. Yeah, I understand people helping each other out. Fair play, I, I respect that and all that sort of you stuff. You've got to be yeah. honest, though. I'm not going to tell you You've got to be great. honest, no. you know what I mean? If your show sucks, I'm not going to sit there. I, 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 I probably won't leave a review. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm not going to go out my way and say, sorry, dude, you, you suck at what you do. You should go yeah. back to flipping burgers and fucking McDonald's, whatever you do, whatever it is, you know, and but... Deep, deep fry Mars bars, yeah. Deep, <laughs> deep fry Mars bars, pizza. You know what I mean? But um, I wouldn't do that. I mean, I had, I've, I've had my fair share. I mean, I, I was talking to one of my on one of my episodes actually. I was talking to one of the girls, and we were talking about um, like kind of trolls and stuff. And I've not really had many trolls, but I brought her on for the second time, and I got between the two times that four months, I got my first guy coming on, giving me shit, commenting, and he was going, I, I can't remember what he said. He just went, oh, he said something like cringe, and I. Reply. I was on TikTok actually, and I replied back saying, uh, um, "What do you mean? What's that all about?" And he just went, "Oh, it's just so cringy. You're this, that." And I was like, "Fair play, you mate." But I always think if you're pissing someone off, if you're getting trolls, you're doing something right. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You're well, doing I, something I mean, right. I got my first one star review, and I thought I've made it. Didn't put a rating on <laughs> on, on there. That's a right. It's now framed. What? Well, get rid of that Titanic. Get that fucking behind you. And get that bloody <laughs> fucking one star up there. Yeah, yeah. I uh, no, I. I I think it's just not, but that 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 one was getting to the point where I, I took all the posts down, but that because I made a bit of a joke of it at first, and then I when people were messaging me, I was like, oh fuck that, I'll get rid of it. No, because I didn't want people going to him and being like that. You, you this is out of order. Type. I, thought, ah, I, hell, it's a fu-. I thought, hang on a minute, and I said that to him because he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I said, don't be daft, like you haven't. I took it as a joke and yeah. thought it was really funny and and said, oh, brilliant. Because I'm flattered somebody would take the fucking time to go rate my program, not the fact that, like, not the fact that they've given me four stars. I thought yeah. it was quite funny. Exactly. But they brought your rating down. I was like, I couldn't care less. It if is. anything, I think if someone's rating is a bit lower, they'll probably take that better. Well, yeah, it looks a bit more genuine, you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. it's not for everyone, you know? Oh, I'll listen to it, not for me. I'll give it, I'll give it four stars, yeah, or I'll give it three and a half or whatever it is. You're like, okay, that, that person's actually listened to it and actually give me an honest yeah. critique. You know what I mean? Because, okay, reply yeah. back. I appreciate that. Maybe this show's not for you, blah, blah, blah. Or yeah. I'll, I'll try to do better next time, blah, 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 whatever. Well, I got, I got a great one because I, I, I actually threw out there and asked for feedback from other podcasters because I was I was kind of feeling a bit fed up because my episodes just, it just the I don't know, the views just dropped for a bit and I was like, oh, God's sake. Um, like really badly. And then, and then someone messaged me with loads of stuff and I was like, oh, yeah, fair enough. But one of their points was like, oh, I think you go like off on one a bit too much. I, I laughed, um, and I was like, <laughs> "Fair." I was like, "Fair enough." And they were like, "Oh, I quite like." But they clearly like podcasts that were very on, like half an hour talking about the film. See you later. We're done. Professional, all like, yeah. oh, the business studio, fucking made yeah. and all that. That's not what, what podcast like, is no, about. What I like a podcast like I was where it's just people talking and it's a genuine conversation because same like f- there's a reason why film vloggers. Excuse me. It's one of my like favorite podcasts because it, it's just two people like arguing and then there's like joking with each other and they live together and then like and a lot of it's not so much a, a review but I think I just think it's brilliant. Um, just so much fun because I I like hearing genuine reactions. Like I nice laugh bit. sometimes when I review like when I edit my own podcast, I laugh at the way I like record things, like the way I say things because I'm like <laughs> you don't know how they come across. Like one of my episodes, I said something like. Well, there's a lady in the wheelchair and she walks up, or she doesn't walk over, she she like goes in the wheelchair over. And I was thinking, Sean, what are you like? It was just <laughs> like, you could tell when I said it, I had no idea. Yeah. So it's it's just it's just stuff like that. Like it's when you get when you get some like this. As that's the same reason why I do mine. I you mentioned before about editing and all that sort of stuff. I have never edited any of my shows, not once. I've kept it all there because it you lose the. The, the the flow of the show and it's genuine because the way I market my show and the way I say it, it's basically I'm here I'm talking to you about your story and I want to hear about it and I want to and it's just going to be like this there's no editing and it's going to be genuine it's going to be like two guys or two girls or a guy or a girl whoever it is down a pub having a chat that is it and yeah. 
don't take it serious. And all these people who want to go off and listen to all these like kind of podcasts that are professionally made in studios and all that sort of stuff. That's, in my opinion, that's not what podcasting is all about. It's like normal conversations. That is what podcasting is. That is the premise of the show. Two guys talking about Die Hard 4, for instance, and just yeah. talking complete shit about it and hopefully entertaining the audience for about a couple of hours, you know? But that's what I enjoy in the fact that you get to hear different viewpoints and I enjoy doing a lot of mine because I get to see I get to see like what America thinks or what America don't understand this or I started the Explain It Yourself series because I got into a conversation this is just what my Twitter is like that's why I got into a conversation with another podcaster about the, the American versus the English like British healthcare systems and telling me about what happens I was like well what if you get this what if you get that well if you don't have any money you die Oh, you should have tagged. You should have tagged me in, Sean. You should have uh, just no, went. Give me two seconds. Was... I've got somebody who wants to jump on. You're like, right, I need you. I'm like, it's like yeah, uh, the yeah. beacons are lit. Sean needs help. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. It was. It was good. It was it. Uh... But then from that, I thought, I'd be on that. Oh, I, love I that. thought there's a series in this. But there I'm is. like, people have said to me like, oh, you know, you did like, I got a box of DVDs, so I, I did one episode called Pick It Yourself, which was a bit of a joke. And people have like said, oh, you do loads of sad series because. I'm in on the joke. Like I know I'm taking the piss to the point of like, what what can I call it next? Like what can I what can I put in front of it yourself to make it something different? But you're diversity, you're 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 mixing it up. That's what you need to do, mate. Mix it up. Nothing wrong with that, Joe. Yeah, but it's only it's only what I want to do. But I suppose going forward, it'll be doing things I want to do. I know there's a few episodes, and I won't be frightened to do things on my own anymore. Like That's when it. I went back to do the yeah. Marvel series. That's the first series of episodes that I've done on my own for mo- like six months, a long time. Wow. And I thought, God, this is going to be different. You've got no one to bounce off. But I'm a lot more comfortable in like to- like talk, like talk, talking, obviously, like more comfortably in this format, whereas I wasn't before. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'd like to think, I'd like to think I've got better at listening to people, not so much talking so much. And then, but then you've got to, play your audience like bill for example he it, we have a great conversation a great laugh but if, if like i I lead the conversations because he, he won't jump in i think is it a politeness thing probably with, with bill it, 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 he won't jump in and type thing so it's like figuring out who you're talking to and whereas like luke from nostalgic who's from like the midlands birmingham anyway um he talks more than i do like <laughs> so it's like trying to figure out but that does it. But he, he's one of these people, Luke. I've said to him, you don't realize how funny you are. Like, not in a, a daft way, but in a the way he describes things and does this, that, and the other to the point where when he reviewed, he reviewed Lightyear and his review, I listened to it in the van at work. It was so funny. And I messaged him when I next had him on the bake off. I said, I'm not fucking having this, Luke. You doing film reviews. There's not enough room for both of us. Like, I'm not having <laughs> it. Because it was so good. And I thought, I'm, I can't have this. Uh, but no, so, and then it's like, it's like, I'm not drawing from other people. Like, I make the joke, like, with Bill, that I'm trying to draw his audience, but I do those episodes because I genuinely enjoy them. I do the film vloggers, like, the stuff with Ben, because I think he's genuinely, he's funny, and I know he's, like, a bit, he did a lot of episodes last year, and I think he kind of, the passion started to go for him, and I'm like, well, I don't want it to, because I think you're brilliant, and I think people, like, I do them because I want to do them. I don't do them because I think, oh, I can get, you know, your episode or, or someone from you. I do it because I enjoy talking to, like, these people. And, like, you think, oh, oh, mate, do you want to do an episode on this? Like, Sarah from Weird Horizon. Oh, no, sorry, tell a lie. Tomorrow, me and Sarah are doing um, Sleepy Hollow. We're doing that film. It's a good film. Uh, That's yeah, a good yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, Great film. Um, it just, and I'm not frightened to go over films I've done before. Like, like the CGI, we've just done The Mummy Returns. I've already reviewed that. Uh, Titanic, I mean... To be fair, for the six months I did a watch along, didn't do it, but it's. It, I think that was a step too far. But it's learning from those mistakes. Like that episode didn't do well at <laughs> all, um, at all. Um, but I thought maybe that was a step too far. Um, so all the other Titanic stuff has been really popular. So I thought maybe, maybe that's probably a, a step too far. I mean, it'll be funny. I mean, it'll be funny. You can only talk about a certain subject for a certain amount of time before it gets a bit like what? Well, yeah. Yeah. The, 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 the well, book crashed. There you go. Job done. Much. I mean, there's, people, uh, well, there's a lot of people on podcasts on it, to be fair, but... Uh, there is a hell of a lot of people on Titanic. Yeah. I have noticed that. Holy yeah. shit. Guys, but, come on. I could, to be fair, I'm quite proud I can hold my own, to be honest, but it was a toss-up whether I did that or this. Um, 
And but in the end, I thought, well, I can't bring anything new to Titanic. Um, my only idea was to do it from the ground up, where you basically would try and explain it to somebody who knew nothing at all. But that would take so much planning, and then I thought, nah, it's too much. I've got a, I've got a real job in the real life. I can't like. Exactly. I don't know how people like yours is a conversation, and I've got friends like Sarah who does it. Like she, she um, she scripts hers, and I'm like, good oh. God, how? Like, and I listen to her episodes. I think like, you scripted all this. Like that is so much work. Like fair play, it it pays off for it. Like the episodes are great and really informative. But I think I wouldn't know where to find the time. I find enough it difficult enough to do. Stuff like this, where you do it, granted, I record for hours, it's my own fault, but yeah. you do this and then you, you'll you t- spend time to edit them down and do my notes and I put them out. But, um, but just, I do think... what I, just do what I do, just get people on and let them do the talking. And you just uh, add um, a couple of sentences every now and again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so easy, it's so easy. Interview shows, if you're interviewing someone, it's so fucking easy. Well, <laughs> I'm, sit- uh... I'm sitting there really begging myself down right now compared to what I should be doing. But, <laughs> but it's... Not what you, it's not what you, uh, what, how you act, it's what you say and the questions you ask. That's yeah. the main way. If you want to interview someone, it's all about the questions. Yeah. No, it is. Um, I don't know if you've um, come across him at all, but there's Marv who does pods like us. And this is like an interview type um, thing. He interviews different podcasters and stuff. Oh, okay. Um, so he, he, his episodes are pretty, he, he interviewed Bill and I listened to Bill's episode. And at that point, I'd done about six or seven episodes of Bill. And I listened to his episode and I thought, good God, I don't know anything about him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> him all these questions. I was like, God, I really haven't asked him much. But uh, I don't know you. To be fair, the, pre- the 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 funniest you get these funny little moments that make you think, ah, I'm doing all right. Uh, where Bill's wife had said to him, Oh, like, who are you podcasting with today? And he said, Oh, so somebody else. And she said, Oh, is he is he British? And Bill was like, No, he's from I don't know Chicago. And she was like, I thought everybody you spoke to was British because he speaks to me. So I just I was like, <laughs> Fair enough, I'll take that. But, uh, so, there you know. go. There you it's go. It's good fun. So we've done a year, and hopefully many years ahead, mate. To be honest, so hopefully it'll <sighs> yeah. be um, a lot more films. I tell you what, you've not got you've got a lot of content to cover because there's never going to be any films. You're <sighs> not going to run out of films, mate. So you're, you're all right. Well, I've dipped into documentaries. I've dipped into this is the thing. Why widened it? Because do what you want. I've dipped into yeah. documentaries. I've dipped into films. Dipped into this TV series. Dip the Bake Off. Dip into stuff you, that only started because. That literally started because I was messaging and I asked, just randomly asked, oh, Luke, do you watch The Bake Off? Oh, yeah, I love it. Oh, so do I. Want to do a side to use on it. <laughs> that Job was like, literally that's it. How you get, that's, how you get, that's how you get it, mate. It's fucking crazy so, stuff like that. It's awesome. But, but I, yeah. I do. I think what you're doing is fucking great, mate, to be fair, Sean. You're doing fucking awesome. And congrats on your obviously one year. And uh, I think it's, uh, you can, you're, you're, you're going the right path. And you're obviously entertaining as hell. And every time I come on, I have a great time with you, mate, to be fair. Uh, I'm, I'm glad. I uh, I don't take uh, positivity well. I'm, I'm not was it if, uh You take this well. You take this and you <laughs> fucking enjoy it because you're never um... going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to get it again. Exactly. That's it. Get a two years and be like, are you still fucking around? Yeah. Jesus, that's... <laughs> That's you're it. on three. You're on three hundred episodes. That's <laughs> it. No, 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 you're on fucking like a thousand episodes by then, right? Do you want to come and do a two year two? What what episode are we on now? Two, three thousand? What what are we doing? You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, honestly, it's aging me. No, I'm joking. Um, no, it's uh, it's it's good fun. I, I do enjoy it. And sorry if it's been a bit self indulgent. Everyone listening, but um, no, it's it's been it's been nice. I've I've enjoyed it, and I continue to enjoy it. And uh, go for it. Like people, like somebody at work listened and quite enjoyed it, and. Although I haven't, I haven't. See, if you done it, I've got to ask this for because you've thrown enough questions at me. Go on. If you told family and friends you do, like guys, I've told family I do this. My friend, most of my friends don't know I do it at all. So, like, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. I just haven't. I just okay. haven't said. I don't know. I probably have said told people when I see them, but I haven't like put on. Oh, by the way, I do this. I just, I don't know. I just haven't. I suppose it was worried that i don't know the fact people you'd know would listen to it which i know sounds really weird because obviously people you don't know listen to it but the fact people who like would normally would i don't know that's just well, I've I can't got, when that. it comes to me i mean like I, i've got um like a merch site and all that sort of stuff as well i've got myself my own um hoodies and t-shirts and all that sort of stuff made up um really like kind of random meme t-shirts as well from previous episodes of people who like i've got one that says because uh, i took the piss out there's a a popular clip that I put on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram that said uh, about Patrick Swayze. I was interviewing a director, 
And he went, Dirty Dancing? Yeah, he goes, uh, uh, Dirty Dancing. He said, that's one of the best films ever. And I went, well, I remember Dirty that. Dirty Dancing is a bit of a wronging because Patrick Swayze was 30 and the girl was 16. So I made a t-shirt up saying Swayze was a wronging. And underneath it, I put uh, the What Line podcast. And that. Stupid things like that. So I've got them all. So I wear them to work. I chuck yeah. them on. I've got, I've, got a, I've got a hoodie. It's a similar sort of hoodie to this. And I've got What Line podcast in the back. So I'm traveling the train and that sort of stuff. And guys at work are going, What's that? And they asked me about it. I'm more than happy to tell them. I'm not going to go. I, I was like, hi, how are you? I'm Ryan. I've got a podcast. But I won't do that. But if they ask me about it, I'll, ask, I'll tell them about it. And I've got loads of my guys at work that listen to it. And some of them are like, that's really quite funny. It's really quite good. So don't be shy of doing it. Word of mouth yeah. is, word of mouth of these sort of stuff is very powerful to start off with. Yeah. So you never know. You could sit and go, oh, this guy, you, your talks at work could be right into films. And uh, then the next guy could oh, be no, like... People, people at work do. I've, I've had... I think someone at work wants to go on and review, I think, um, Sleeping with the Enemy. And people at work give me... Because I work with people of, like, a lot a lot older and, so, you know... Yeah. Not a lot older. Some people are older. Whatever. <laughs> Digging a hole, Sean. Um, <laughs> people are, like, give me... People of, like... Some of the, like, lasses at work have given me, you know, like, like seven guys, seven girls, and all these really... Like all the films that I would never in a million. So that's go. another thing that I like. I like the fact that I, I don't. The vintage some, hour. I, the some, vintage yeah, some, show, I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, vintage it yourself or some shit. But no, it's. Uh, <laughs> it's my you know what you say? Vintage it yourself seems a bit dirty, actually. It's dirty, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's a a Welcome to Granny Night, isn't it? <laughs> vintage it yourself. You're like, oh, did he have a yeah. shower after listening to this? <laughs> yeah, F- feel it yourself. No, that's the reason. That's the reason why. That's the reason why I never called it "Do It Yourself" because the the title came from my friend saying to me, "Like, I don't want to like do it anymore. Um, I've got stuff going on." Like, but you really, he said to me, "You really enjoy it." I thought, yeah, that's yeah, what you're you saying. And he said, "You really enjoy it. What you need? What do it yourself? You get a lot out of it. Keep doing it." And I thought, can I call it "Do It Yourself"? And because I was going to call it "Film Something," and there was too many that were "Film Something." Yeah. Um, if, if you say "Do It Yourself," that just means that it's like you know you're jacking off for the next hour. Oh, you're going to teach people about joinery? <laughs> no. Either way, either way, there's wood involved, isn't there? But uh, <laughs> I like either way you went to joinery and I went to masturbation. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it just shows you where we are. Either way, there's wood, isn't there? So that's why I didn't pick Wait. "Do It Yourself." How would you? How would you do that? How would you? But I'm not going to be like. That's another thing I'm going to do. I'm not going to be worried about doing things like vintage. I've got loads of random stuff to do, loads of random yeah. films, all the films to do. I don't, I don't, I'm not bothered if like, if Pete, like, oh, well, like, it's not the, like, cause I did a few, like, modern, I did a few modern, I went to cinema a few times, did a few modern films. And those episodes did reasonably well. I think my sister or someone said to me, well, what? maybe that's the way to go, do films that are coming out. I said, no, because most of them are shit. And then, um, like, I'd rather do, I'd, yeah, I'd rather do, like my, I've got that many DVDs. I could honestly, I could podcast for ten years, um, and I'd rather do do films that people have like never heard of. Never heard of. Or them. like films like The Cruel Sea, which is like nineteen fifty something, black and white about the Second World War, and it's set on a, a Royal Navy destroyer, and it's all about almost like shell shock, but what they got by being bombed and stuff. Well, that's a good little. Do... That's a good little niche, really, to be fair, because that's because mm-hmm. what you're doing there is literally because everyone does. You have to look at look. All these people do all these new films, you know what I mean? You've got all these like Marvel films, all this. A lot of podcasts are doing that, you know what I mean? But then yeah. you've got no one's really doing the fucking vintage stuff. No one's doing the old stuff, you know, like Blade Runner or even going back further than that, like The Warriors, going back to the yeah. 70s, well, 80s. My mum loves The Warriors. She, yeah, she wants to film. do that. Well, I've, I've done like the Bridget Jones stuff and just ra- like other stuff that I just I fancy doing because it's interesting. So. I did like I did a, a, a like a BBC film of my favorite book, like I don't like as a kid like I don't I'm not bothered like I'll do, I think I'll be fr- less frightened to not frightened but le- less bothered to do what I want to do rather than what I think people want to hear. Which who knows because you got to do what you want otherwise what's the got point? No point. Got to do it, man. But uh, oh, but no, thanks once again for coming on, Ryan and. Uh, hey, mate, shot. It's been an absolute pleasure. I love has. coming on this show, mate, and. Uh, Hopefully, uh, I'll come on again and have another massive look. Because the thing is, what's crazy about this show? We started off doing your show, and then we mar- <laughs> I kind of merged into my show a little bit. And yeah, I was like, oh, exactly. I love this. Love yeah. that. But, uh, oh, man, it's been great. But no, thanks for coming on, Ryan. And uh, no, I really appreciate it. And I must go because I'm down for the toilet. But uh, 
But no, cheers for uh, <laughs> see you in a that's bit, staying mate. in. See you in a bit, mate. Cheers. Always a pleasure. Yeah, you too. Cheers, man. Bye. Bye.